Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we got a special, special, special guest. Neil Mims is with us. <laughs> How are you, bro? I'm good. I uh, feel like I may have gotten uh, not enough specials. Oh. I've, I've heard a little more specials for other people, but that's, all. I, that's they, kind of that. That's three is the is the norm. Three is the norm, but then <laughs> either, you start feeling average. But then Raj or some of the guest even wants more specials. You know, yeah. Yeah, it throws my whole game off. Yeah. You know, I'm good. I'm good. I'm thankful to be here. Special, special. Yeah. These damn millennials. Special. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Life is good. Life uh, is good, bro. You got a lot of things going on. We'll get we'll get into the whole uh, skate academy. That's uh, yeah. amazing, the Neil Mim Skate Academy, yeah, which you. I'm super interested in. But we'll, we'll get into that later. Christie's I, glasses, like seeing glasses. Yeah, no, that's what like, it sounded like. Something like yeah. classes. <laughs> oh, classes. Oh, yeah. I could maybe teach you how to switch flip manual. What oh. about like a lip slide down a rail? It's too basic for you. Too basic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about hit your head on the ground really hard off? I can oh. teach everybody how to do that. One. <laughs> that's, that's easy, right? Yeah, that's so easy. Gravity would teach you that. Uh, <laughs> Just don't get on a fifty-fifty properly and make sure that there's a lot of uh, stairs. Go to the bar first and have a couple Guinnesses, and then go find the biggest rail around the corner <laughs> with a crack in front of it, with people walking everywhere, and then just go for it. You're good. <laughs> Was that the, that, that was the deal? That was the deal behind that. Listen, a, a couple Guinnesses could get you nice, bro. <laughs> I, I thought I had that shit. You thought you, <laughs> thought you had it? Wait, did you have an idea you wanted to skate that rail beforehand or just found it like that? So we were already skating down the street. It was the Route 66 tour. There was some mm -hmm. awesome dudes on that tour. Uh, Ty Evans and uh, was the filmer and mm -hmm. Jody Morris was shooting photos. He drove us the whole time. But uh, Danny Montoya. Oh, sick. Duffy was on that trip. Uh, Chris Lambert. Pat oh. Chinita. Okay. Sick. Yeah, it was... Uh, um, heavy crew, which is really, really. Oh, Jonas Ray. Jonas Ray. Richard Angelides. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was really, really fun. Yeah, I was tripping on that because you know you had the you had a part in feedback trans world yeah. and then but that slam wasn't in feedback. It was in the reason or something, right? Yeah, the reason. Was, so um, yeah, feedback uh, came out before or like I'd filmed. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you went on the Route 66 tour, and then so then Ty put it in the reason. Yeah, so yeah, so I'd I'd already I was like, oh, cool, I had a video part come out. All right, I'm gonna go film some more stuff. Keep it going. Yeah, but I was partying a lot at the same time, and so uh, you know, back to the that situation with the rail. We were down the street skating a smaller rail, smaller square rail, and I I never even done a kickflip fifty fifty on a rail before, but I was like. I did it down you the did street. It. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Danny Montoya did a Nolly, uh, Nolly front nose, Nolly front nose yeah. Yeah. that, that same session. And, uh, so I was like, I was feeling you're good juiced, yeah. because I'd already ate shit a few times Okay. before that, uh, before that rail, I'd already went down a few good ones just because I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't clear headed. Okay. So I was just right. skating buzz. Like, ah, I was in fuck it mode, you know, Throw, like, throwing your body down <clears throat> and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, I was like, Oh cool. I got a clip. Finally. I were like two weeks in, I get a clip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, the curse. Uh, yeah. So I got the clip and then I was like, let's celebrate, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So me and, uh, I think it was Duffy. It was some, it's somebody, one of the crew they stayed and skated we skated all the way around looking for a bar to go have a couple cold ones at uh -huh. and uh so we did and i would never forget i had a, a pound at a couple guinnesses i was like good okay. but, <laughs> but on the way there is when i passed by that rail and i oh. stopped and I, I was like oh my god that looks like a good rail yeah it was super low it was steep it was like something it was just attractive to me i'm like oh dude i think i could do this so I rolled up a few times. It was like no runway. <laughs> there was a crack in front of it. It was, like, was, it was like, narrow too, right? Yeah, it was I, a I, very claustrophobic. It seemed like it was. Yeah. It, and brick landing. Uh. I mean, it was it was pretty terrible. But like I said, I had I was already a little buzz before the bar and was feeling excited and confident. I'm like, yeah, I got this. Hey, let's go. 
get the beers, got the beers. Let's go get the crew. I'm going to grind this rail. Okay. I'm going to 50 wow. Where was this? In Denver. Denver. Colorado. Okay. Yeah. So, do, you, uh, do you remember how many stairs it was by chance? Uh, 14. 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. So I got got the crew. I was all excited. Like, right, let's go. Hey, let's go get this. You know, I want to 50 50 this rail. All right, cool. Yeah. So we went there and it was just, I'll never forget. It was like right at five o'clock. People were just getting off of work. Mm. So the sidewalks were really busy. It was one of those throw your board down in the ollie position in ollie real quick to grind it was like a pretty challenging setup okay along with everybody walking sure around. yeah so, a lot of distractions yeah a lot of distractions yeah. on top of i had some alcohol in my sure. <laughs> yeah a little distraction too yeah <laughs> um so yeah i was like uh everybody got set up and everybody was watching and i was just like i would never forget the two ladies that we're walking. If I saw them today, I'd probably recognize them. <laughs> oh, they're, they're ingrained in your brain. Because I was like, I was waiting for the right moment. And those were the two ladies. I'm like, after these two ladies, I'm going. Because I saw the gap behind yeah. them. Okay. And I was like, it's on. I was like, they're the, all right, I'm going. And then so they walked past and I was like, boom, went for it. And So that was first try. That slam. First, yeah. First <laughs> yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Wow. I got it right off the bat. Yeah. Well, you, you know what I meant, though. It was first go. It first was. Go. That was yeah. my first and only go at that okay. rail ever. Um, the funny damn. thing is, if you land that, people would probably forget that 50 50. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you slammed on your face, like people will still remember it to this oh, day. Oh, still remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny because a lot of people still bring it up. And once again, I mean, it's cool to have a slam. I mean, people love slams. They don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah they don't weird. remember any video parts. Not that I had a lot anyway, but nobody ever talks about my video parts. Well, they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, yeah. Slam. Right. Oh, you're the dude that smashes fit. Dude. Uh, you but know? dude, yeah. it wasn't just it's a right. slam. It was the sh afterwards. It was a shows. story. With it was it. Yeah. the needle in the head, dude. Yeah. Fuck Them that. cleaning it out and stitching it up. And Ty, uh, it, it was cool because usually doctors in uh, hospitals won't let the cameras in there. Right. Yeah. And so whatever Ty did behind the scenes with the doctors, they Should were just, mind trick? yeah. And was just super cool that they allowed him in there to go film that whole process. It's amazing. Yeah. And once again, you know, Ty was awesome. He helped keep me in good spirits, even though I was just, I was happy to be alive. Honestly, I'd like, I knew I could probably, if it was just a little over this way, could have hit my temple. Oh yeah, that's oh. true. That's true. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. So I started thinking all that stuff. So anyway, Ty was in there and I had a buzz and I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> like, didn't really feel much pain. I broke my wrist two weeks before and oh. didn't know it on one of the falls. Um, and I'd broken a bone in there, but I broke even a, another bone on that fall. And so when they x-rayed it, they're like, hey, did you know you had a broken wrist for like a couple of weeks now? I'm like, oh yeah, that's why my wrist hurt. On the oh. It's funny how they could tell on the yeah. x-ray. You probably see it healing. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I was like, no, but that makes sense. Cause I did fall really hard on a rail, like the first couple of days of the trip and I had to wrap up my wrist. Oh and God. So yeah, it was already broken, but it broke more on the face smash. And, uh, yeah. And it was just, it's funny, I guess on the way to the, uh, hospital, I was still like out of my mind looking at rails. Like, <laughs> just on the way back, yeah. Lambert was laughing. I'll never forget. Lambert was like, "Dude, what the hell are you doing? You still still looking at rails? Like you want to go skate rails?" I just got through smashing my face. How, oh how my many God. stitches? That's how confident I was. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have a concussion now? Or diluted? <laughs> you have a concussion? No, that was the thing. Is they they uh, examined my head and brain and and uh, and saw no no concussion. But ironically. And I guess I was just loose enough uh, with, you know, having now call sure, my system. Sure. And, yeah. I don't know. I hit I mean, my head or I have a hard head yeah. right in the right spot where it didn't. It knocked me silly, yeah, but sure. I was never really out. Oh, yeah. I wonder if, you know, you did hit your head pretty hard, yeah. but I wonder if the bricks played a part. You know, because the bricks, if you caught the edge of that little brick seam or something, yeah. maybe that could have helped help split it even more. Yeah. I don't sure. know. I'm just thinking out loud it's like a cheese grater you know what i mean yeah. a little bit no you, it was definitely do you have any like do you have a mark or like a scar yeah so i have a scar right here and some of my skull is gone what right what do yes. you mean How, how's your skull gone like it just chipped oh it chipped it, it chipped out of there so when they were cleaning it out with that vacuum thing oh yeah so i got some of the skull oh. that was floating around in there and so yeah there's a little like indent right here 
And so ironically, over the past, uh, however many, that's been like 20 years, it became a magnet. I remember skating street and oh, trying no. to film more stuff. And my board popped up and hit it one time. I was doing <sighs> something downstairs and I happened to hit the tail and went, boom, split it open again. What? And I was like, really? It's like the shinner that doesn't go away. Yeah. It's like you get the shinner and then you just keep hitting that same yeah. fucking spot. Yeah. Like yeah. a swellbow or something. God yeah. damn. How many stitches? It was uh, 50 all 50. 100 total. Oh, they did underneath. Yeah, there was 50 mm. all the way underneath. That was the little layer of skin where the skull is mm -hmm. that they had to sew. And then another 50 on top of that. Oh, my dude, God. 50 God. there, wow. too. Yeah. I wonder, 50, did anyone ever 100. do that rail? Yes. Ben Gardner. Oh, really? Yep. This guy, local kid from Colorado. So check this out. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You're going to love this. And I'm stoked. I, uh, I have a friend that runs a sober living down in... Um, Encinitas, Tommy Cadell. He used to run XYZ. Well, oh, well. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's revamped it a little bit again, too. They have Sick. Like shirts and hats. Dope. But he uh, runs a sober living. And so he told me one day, um, he was like, hey, I got this kid. He skates. Uh, um, super cool. He's like, I think you could sponsor him, you know, like AA stuff. And Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so I was like, yeah, dude, I'll come over and help him out. So I go over and we're just starting to we're go out back and having coffee and just getting to know each other, talking about skating and stuff. And he's like... Hey, dude, you know, it may sound sound weird, but uh, I'm from Denver. I remember that rail. So he started talking. I was like, oh, another kid. That knew yeah. yeah. Oh, God. oh, the slam. Yeah, I have yeah. a scar here. Yeah. Got 100 stitches. Yeah. And so he's trying to be as humble as he could about it. And was like, yeah, dude, I actually, uh, I was like, no way, you know, like, you know, that rail or whatever. And he's like, trying to be really calm. He's like, yeah, I actually skated it. I was like, what? <laughs> You skated the rail? He's like, yeah, 50 50 did. And he's like, pulls up video and shows me. Wow. Yeah, right. 50 50 did. Do you get flashbacks? No, but <laughs> I was super psyched that someone did it. It was yeah. like, this was. <laughs> the kid that you sponsored for A? Like A? Yes. <laughs> ran, right? That's incredible. And then I ended yeah. Up, I, yeah. yeah, I ended up getting to know him and. You know, we still, I haven't talked to him in a while. I think he's, he's back in Denver. I did see him, I don't know, five, six years ago. Over okay. there. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, the kid I ended up getting introduced to, ended up sponsoring an AA and helping him get sober, was the kid that grinded the rail. How? That's, an, how that's awesome. incredible. Small world yeah. shit. Wow. wow. You would that's think that something like that, nobody would want to skate it. It's almost like yeah. a, like cursed or something. Yeah, you know. I don't know. Kids are crazy these days. I know. That, it's, it's true. <laughs> it's he's true, just a local still. ripper. He never really did anything with skating. Uh, I mean, I don't want to. Or sound maybe, like that, but he didn't get any sponsors like to mm -hmm. take him anywhere. But he rips. He's a skate. He. I took him to the Palomar Rail and with Swift, and he was going to Smith grind it, but he fifty fifty that thing. Which one's the, the Palomar uh, Rail? The one that I uh, oh that the, one the lip slide yeah, yeah. oh geez. so we got to know each other and I took him uh, oh wow he's yeah. getting every rail that you skated yeah well and <laughs> ironically enough he scorpioned that thing trying to smith grind it oh. the Palomar rail and did almost the same effing fall you oh did. you scorpioned it too well I, it was kind of a scorpion but he scorpioned that rail but fell to his face and flipped over at the uh, bottom of the Palomar oh rail. my Isn't that crazy God. turns out they have the same birthday too yeah <laughs> no, right dude so what's your son that was the last trick in your trans world part right the uh, lip slide? yeah yeah the lip slide to fake you mm. yeah so just this same old tricks. And <laughs> that was gnarly, rail. dude. No, thank you. You were one of those dudes at that time that was hitting the big stuff. Yeah, that went big. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I, I didn't have much, so I had to make do with what I had. I didn't, I wasn't the tech Yeah, guy. but it takes a lot to jump down those things, man. And we're yeah. talking, what, 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 like you said, we're talking like 20 years ago. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of mental shit for sure. sure it's kind sure. of like uncharted territories almost of like who can. Get, I mean, you got like, Jamie Thomas, yeah. you got the Muska. Mm-hmm. There's I mean, there were other dudes. Arto, Arto maybe Arto, a little yeah, later. Little, yeah. 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 Roly, I don't know. Like yeah, you got, Rally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah there was only like a handful, handful. of yeah. dudes exactly. doing that. And you're one of them, man. Yeah. Thank you. That's crazy. I appreciate you grouping me in with those guys. I have a lot of respect <laughs> for those dudes. Dude, Thank for you. sure. Well, your feedback part. Well, let's, 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 let's build up to that, the feedback part. Because uh, well, let, let's go back to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, born and raised. Yep. How was that? <laughs> Florida man, hot Just, and humid. Should we change the subject? <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Hot and humid. Hot and humid. You know, rough ground. Uh, you know, 
there's a lot of good back home when I was younger. Uh, grew up skating with King Gale, Brian uh, Childers. Amazing. Yes. yes. Wow. Clyde Singleton. So and then rad. Cairo eventually uh, came into the picture when he moved there, uh, you know, from his dad moving around with the military, I think it was. Okay. Correct yeah. me if yeah. I'm wrong. But yeah, he ended up in Jacksonville, so we'd see each other and skate together. Did he as introduce well. himself as Cairo or Roger? Roger, I think. Actually, I don't know when Cairo Roger started Foster. taking her. Yeah. Hmm. But I, I knew that was his real name for some reason. That's funny you asked that because I don't, I can't remember exactly. So I don't want to huh. say a hundred percent. That's now when issue. all these guys were coming around. Is this are, are you are you getting into sponsorship at this time, or were you still just a kid? Just a kid. Oh, okay. So what happened was uh, I saw some of the older guys skating, and and uh, Kane was one of them. Um, I see it at the local like mini ramp that were built in the woods. There was all these like weird ramp backyard ramps back there, right? And okay. This was the eighties. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I begged my dad to. This was the eighties. Yeah. What yeah. year did you start skating? I started getting on a board in like eighty two. Damn. How, How was old like, are you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, eighty two. But th I mean, that, that's when you're just rolling around. Exactly. You didn't know anything about it. I didn't. Right. And I was just interested in it because I saw this dude. He ended up dying of leukemia. Christian oh, wow. Bullard. I'll never forget his name. And he jumped off a ramp on some skinny board, and, and it was my brother's friend, my older brother, and and uh, that's when I was like, oh my god, I want to do that. It looks right. exciting. So I started messing around and okay. with some uh, one of my close friends, Jason. Uh, Five Ash and his older brother had a mini ramp in their yard. And mm. over the course of a couple of years, I just started really taking to it. And, uh, and then begging my dad to take me to all the ramps in the backyards, like just popping in and watching. Oh, wow. And Kane was a part of that. That's why That's I, amazing. I keep bringing Kane and, and we're still in contact. We're like brothers. We, it's, what, what is he doing now? He's a MMA teacher. fighter, right? Yeah, he teaches or co he's a coach. Yeah, MMA coach. I mean, he's. He's really good at it too. Oh damn! But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's That's a, awesome, dude. Yeah, so he's good. That's I was a big fan of him growing up. Man. He's so we all sick. Me too. Yeah, I was still like one of the best skateboarders I've ever seen. His style's buttery, bro. Yeah, yeah. backside flips. So yep. I was like, I love Kane. So I, st I started looking up to Kane. He's three years older than me. So I started looking up to him and a couple of the other older guys, and then. I, you know, obviously I was too young and just kind of like that little skate rat that mm. was just bugging them to tr try and like hang with them. But a little tag along. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah, having yeah. it. No, they weren't. No, no. <laughs> and understandable. I was still young, like nine, ten years old. Okay. My dad had built me a launch ramp and I just was doing my own thing. And I saw, I started watching uh, videos like Future Primitive was oh, the uh, oh. my first video. Okay. And then Animal Chin. And so I was really inspired by the Bones Brigade and uh, just started kind of just like taking i don't know just started really working on things on flat ground jumping the launch ramp judos and just anything i could yeah and uh and then um i got my first real injury i got half a muscle amputated out of my leg what <laughs> whoa backyard mini ramp i was 10 years what old you, uh, what oh, you you half the ramp yeah i just jumped off the side and went to my knees and there was a board with a nail oh whoa 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 whoa, yeah. whoa 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 board with a nail sticking up so i went to my knees and i was like whoa what is that and there was a hole in my leg. Oh, right you here. just basically. Oh, in your shin. In my shin, yeah. So oh. the nail went through. It was like a rusty nail. And then what did they, 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 they amputated a part of the muscle? What'd you say? Well, <laughs> that came later. So what it was, my mom rushed me to the uh, emergency room oh, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's just a nail, like a rusty nail. We'll give them a tetanus shot. It'll be all right. Be on its way. Yeah. yeah. So two weeks go by and, and within these couple of weeks, my leg is starting to get swollen. Ooh pus was building up and i'm like my parents are like this thing's not getting better and i'll when i was walking to my room to go watch tv with my dinner this pop happened in my ankle i don't know what it was but it had something to do with all that fluid that was built up and it was this crazy pop did you and drop your dinner? yeah yeah i dropped, you dropped dinner, your dinner and that's when my mom heard me crying i dropped the dinner started crying all crazy she rushed me to the emergency room they're like he's got to go in surgery right away this he might lose his leg. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was really getting the infection. Was yeah, it was like gangrene, gangrene. getting oh, to that point. And uh, so my mom was freaking out, of course, and Good. I just didn't know what was God. going on. Yeah, I was man. so young, and and uh, so yeah, I get out of surgery, and they're like, hey. He, you know, he definitely should never skate again. He's probably going to have troubles walking. Wow. What? Yeah. And uh, they they suggested this crazy brace. Um, it was like some of the plastic brace that builds muscle. It's like my shin muscle right here. So they, 
um, gave me this brace. We went and got it. It was really expensive. I remember my mom's like, I can't afford this. Like, I can't afford it. I was like, you know, please. Like, <laughs> this is <laughs> a walk. Yeah. Yeah. So a year, six months to a year, I'm walking in this brace every day, but I'm having my mom or my dad take me to these ramps and I'm just sitting back soaking it all in. Oh, watching. you couldn't even skate for a year. Yeah. You had to sit there and watch. But it was really good because I was really soaking it in. I was soaking it in because I'd already found love in it. I was already passionate about it. I was like, oh, and I would just watch how their feet moved. I was really oh yeah hyper focused. Like I said, it was it was Kane, a couple surf guys, a couple just a bunch of the older local guys that were ripping and you were like learning how to skate like visually exactly. Yeah, I think that had a, it definitely helped because. When I started skating again, which I was not supposed to, okay, <laughs> okay. you know, skateboarders, nothing's sure. going to yeah, keep sure. us down, right? So uh, I started skating again and, and and started getting pretty decent, pretty fast. And I remember skating somewhere, and Kane was skating there too. And then that's when Kane took notice, and I finally had one of the older guys, and it happened to be Kane, take notice. Wow. of me and what I was doing. Amazing. And that's when we, he started, it was like, I was cool enough yeah. for him to come talk to now because yeah. I was doing some stuff on my skateboard. Right. And you're a year older too now, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was yeah. 11. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> 11. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Wait, how was it re how, learning how to walk and everything again from that? It, it wasn't that bad from what I remember. I mean, I was so young. Well, not only that, like, oh shit. Hey. <laughs> The Highland Peak, man. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Is there a, a oh, fucking towel, right towel? Top of the fridge. I got so excited there. Yeah, you did. I, was gonna... I like that. Thank yeah, you, bro. Appreciate you getting excited. Of course, man. So, but not only that, but how to Ollie. I mean, like how yeah. you, that muscle, you have no muscle. The brace. I'm Thank telling you, Kelly. you, walking around in that brace, that brace was a saver. That, that, that. Yeah. I wonder what this brace was. I know, it was wacky and... Um, but it worked. It was like old school. It, like all it Forrest was gum shit. Yeah, like it fit on the bottom of my foot and then just came up the back of my calf and then it strapped around. There was no front part. And so when it, it was whenever, like a reverse shin guard almost. It, it was like a. Yeah. So when I stepped, it was hard for me to step and bend this way so it would build that shin muscle again uh, where they just amputated. It almost shifted. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It was my back, uh, my back leg, but like I said, a whole year of using that. And then I skated in you it skate? too. Oh, you did? I kept, oh, okay. I kept using it. Um, because they were recommended that I just continue using it. Mm. So it, it helped. I mean, whatever it was, it, it I was able to skate again. And yeah. So wow. I was like this at the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. I mean, you hear so many stories of doctors like, Oh, he'll never, you'll never skate again. I feel you'll like never say that on purpose. It's in oh, to, really, to, to, get, you. to get you motivated. I don't know. It's not the best bedside manner. Yeah. Uh, no. It's not the best. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those things when you just, some, some people want hope. Huh? Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, a, just like the teachers, you know. But they told you, like, yeah, you'll skate again. And if you couldn't, and you're like, he fucking said I'll skate again. That's true. I think it could be protocol for them. Yeah. Maybe they're just protecting themselves. Yeah. So it was like ER. It was like emergency surgery. It was uh, it, when they, they x-rayed my leg. They said he's got to get, because I was losing blood internally. Oh. And it was getting bad. It could have went to my heart. And then that's when, during the surgery, they went and told my mom that they might have to chop off my leg. And she was like, please don't do whatever you can to save it. Uh, yeah. So I almost lost my leg because of this wow. injury. Oh. That's when I knew skateboarding's for me. Yeah. <laughs> I came out of surgery. I'm like, I love this I love shit. That. Wow. Jeez, <laughs> and then so now you're you're in the group now. Kane Gale yeah. accepted you into the now you're skating with all these dudes. Yeah. Clyde was around Clyde too. Clyde Singleton I started amazing. hanging out with him. Brian Childers. Brian Childers. Another guy, Alan English, was amazing. Uh he became a musician, but anyway, it's wow. like all these these guys that I looked up to that I knew were good in in the area, and I mean Buck Smith was even a part of that. Huh. Um, he was even older than those dudes and was oh, already wow. pro for Sims, you know. Yeah. Okay, and he would, you know, he'd buy a beer. So age. all these guys <laughs> are they sponsored or they're still trying to? They're on the come up. Yeah. They, so Kane was at that level where he's like, hey. It's about you know, time. Yeah, and, and I uh, got a camera like within another year after we mm. became friends. Um, well, my stepdad got a camera, and I just happened yeah. to S borrow it. Borrow it. Yeah, yeah. St yeah, yeah. borrow it. Right. So uh, I would sneak it and mm -hmm. then go film with Kane, and because Kane wanted to send a video to H Street. Oh at wow! The time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I was all about being a part of that, and so we made him a uh, sponsor me tape and sick, and he put the cult music to it. Oh, did he? Yeah. 
Yeah, I forgot. I think it was Wildfire. I don't know what song. <laughs> anyway, but it was really good. And yeah. uh, sh- sure enough, uh, you know, he sent it sent it to those guys, and uh, I think he got a call from Dave Andrek because Dave Andrek was part of that at the time. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, uh, yeah. Anyway, so he he started getting recognition, okay. and I'm still like, oh, you know, you know, Kane's still like my favorite dude to be around and and he was more level-headed so i had my i had my crew because i'd already started drinking at the time i I was just raised around alcohol oh okay so it was just in my life so i had the the motivated skate crew Mm -hmm. older guys and then i had the the motive the drinking skate crew older guys yeah the motivated drinking crew yes the motivated drinking crew that but there were skateboarders too yeah they would feed into buying me alcohol at an early age wow you know uh, when i wanted it so i'd like pick and choose like okay if kane's not if i'm not skating with kane today because he's wanting to hang out with his older friends i'm gonna go hang out with my group b friends yeah and get the older guys to buy me beer and drink and skate on my own okay wow (laughs) this is 12 years old yeah (laughs) my god (laughs) i mean 12 is 21 backwards I mean, sure, Jeez. but at twelve, you're just drinking you're strawberry milk. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I never forget. My mom would be cooking dinner, and and she'd have like a full glass of cold beer, and I would just sneak up behind her and just know that she wasn't looking because she didn't, she wouldn't feed it to me. Yeah, of course. My dad would give me sips of beer, but my mom was pretty strict about it. But I'd go up, and I never drank normally. I never was like, oh, I'm gonna take a sip of mom's beer. It was like. Are you down, oh, Mom's beer? I would pound it. What would it mom? Would, <laughs> would Mom just be like, "Well, I must have drank in that." Yeah, we're, yeah like, she'd what? turn around and she'd get pissed. Oh, okay. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> twelve years old. I know it's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, that's not amazing, <laughs> but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and my stepdad was a, yeah. My stepdad was a uh, commercial deep sea fisherman at the time, so there was always wow. beers on the boat, and there was just alcohol around me. I yeah, mean, my dad. Um, even at an early age and it, it, it was like a normal thing. Like there was beers in the cars when they'd pick me up. Oh, and sure. Right. Right. Like drinking and driving was okay. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I look back on it now. I'm like, what the hell? Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. I mean, even like swimming with alligators is like, I'd rather drink and drive. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I'm sorry. No, either one is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, We'd yeah. be down in the lake house. I I love telling this because nobody said anything. And I'm like, we're these little kids swimming in these lakes that had alligators. Right. And we'd see alligator heads popping up and we're just like, ignore them and just really and play in the water. But grandma, everybody's in the house. Sees them too, and they're not like, "Hey, maybe you guys should get out of the water. It could be dangerous." We just did. You guys watch like nature shows? I mean, do you know what these alligators are capable of? They no. rip your head off. Did you hear stories of people getting fucked with? That's what I'm saying. I thought the grandma or my dad or somebody would. Like, if it was wrong, that. right? Yeah, if it was you know? wrong. They because uh, you hear stories out here of stuff in Florida, like yeah. someone got hit by a freaking yeah. alligator. It's, so <laughs> yeah. it, they don't happen too often. It's like a shark attack. They're sure. rare. Okay. For how many people are in those waters and how many gators and how many sharks and all that stuff, hmm. they really don't happen too often. Okay. Huh. Um, that's why they're highly talked about when they do happen. You know, they're. It's unusual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's unusual. So, but still, it's like you, you want to keep your grandkids safe. You want to. Yeah, if, yeah I, totally. I would. Just... Lightning. Lightning was the thing. Is if it was raining and lightning, get out of the water. But we could swim with gators. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, all right, I went off topic there about the gators. No, but it's I Florida love it, shit, bro. Right? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I couldn't even imagine yeah. a gator. So yeah, Jacksonville. It's my hometown. I'm thankful for it. I, I learned a, a lot of good things and mm-hmm. bad things there. Um, you know, around how I was raised, but I had a lot of inspiration. Yeah. Skateboarding. Oh, around sure. Me. I mean, those were the dudes. Dude, Clyde. Clyde. I mean, he, he was gnarly and kind of cruel sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he would talk a lot of shit. And mm-hmm. I mean, he, I was so young. I was really sensitive. He made me, oh, made me cry sometimes. Did, yeah. yeah. You know, and just like ragging on me. I was getting stuff from uh, Airborne and Zorlac out here and he would just clown on my sponsor. Oh, really? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm all excited. I'm getting packages and he just like, oh, fuck that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love Clyde. He's wanna, great. Wanna, oh, wanna, yeah, yeah. I want to clear the air with that. I do love Clyde. And like I said, he was a big inspiration for me as well. Um, but man, Fakey, he did all the. Oh, Fakey super, Front Crooks. Fakey Front Crooks down the Hemming Rail, which is our like local um, hometown 
uh, downtown park, you know, mm, that we skated. Wow. And those rails were perfect, but he did the most tech shit, fakey ollie, backside, tailside, fakey, fakey, front crook down. Such I mean, rad style, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, made oh. things like, and so anyway, I looked up to Clyde as well. And How much older? Even when he was being mean to me as a little kid. Did you just, give Clyde shit when he got on Acme? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to that. talk shit to that dude, probably. <laughs> so he always wins. He just, always yeah, yeah. You gotta know something about Clyde. That's why it's like, you, you, you know, can give a couple jabs, but he'll knock you out. And I've tried. And that's when I'd end up crying. <laughs> I'm like, I got him. No, I didn't. I did it. I did it. I thought I did. No, so that was the thing. Is Clyde's always one step ahead when it comes to shit talking. Uh, he's really he's good. good at it. He's, he's good, good at good. it. Yeah. How much older is he than you? He's three you? years, too. He's okay. Just was everyone a cane? All them probably a little yeah bit? around the same. Okay, oh. shoulders was uh, yeah. He was three years older than me wow. as well. It was just this whole that generation, and oh. I was I was kind of like the younger guy. And Mike Peterson was younger. Mm. He's he's my age, so Peterson was like the younger kid ripping and. Uh, yeah. So, well, you said you got sponsored by what? Uh, Zorlac. <laughs> it was one of the local pros was Bob Reeves at the time, and he rode for Airborne, which was a part of Zorlac mm -hmm. skateboards. Oh, gotcha. And uh, that came out of Syndrome Distribution, but yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't Syndrome then? It was like yeah, just Zorlac back then. Yeah. So, uh, Bob Reeves mentioned me, and then uh, sent a, a tape of me skating to them and then they sent me like a board or two here and there. okay yeah just but is just I was a little excited. Yeah. I used to yeah. wait for that ups truck i would oh hear it God. and every time i'd hear it i'd be running outside and it would just keep going keep going <laughs> <laughs> i think like, we've all been through that yeah like, look yeah. waiting for that ups today man. wasn't the day but no. it's coming and I didn't realize those guys were busy with their own shit that they're not sending packages to a little kid. Yeah. Well, you think you right just got away. off the phone with them and they're going to, tomorrow is going to show up. Yeah. 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 No, it's like weeks and we, I'd wait so long and then I'm calling. And then I was going to say, you're going to, do, do I call? Yeah. Do I not call? Do I? Mark Schmidt. This? Mark Schmidt was the, uh, the guy. Did you do a deadbolt then? Yeah, so I was riding Deadbolt and Zombu wheels. Zombu wheels. Five millimeter Zombu wheels. I like that name, Zombu. Hey. Uh, once what happened again, to Zombo? Clyde would lay into all that shit. He loved. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh man! And now I understand why. Yeah. Back then, I was a little kid, just so stoked to get stuff from California, and Clyde would just ruin it sometimes. Oh wow! <laughs> well, what? When did it? When? When did you actually get sponsored? So my first trip to California um, mm. was. I Who'd was, you go out there with? I actually hopped on. A, I sold everything and hopped on a Greyhound bus. Seriously? Wow. Yeah, right. Solo. Not proud of this, but it was a high school dropout. Okay. I, I, academics just weren't my thing. Um, a lot of skateboarders. I know. It's every 90% of the people who sit in that chair dropped out. Yeah. And now like you're going to academy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now you're going to academy. Yeah. So, you know, it ended up working out sure, for me, but sure. I do not like to, uh, you know, uh, advocate, promote, yeah, 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 advocate yeah, yeah. for that by any means. But I was lucky and fortunate to where I've been able to pull it off so far. Mm -hmm. Um but anyway, so I, I sold everything and my parents were obviously scared and bummed. Um, well, how old were you? I was 17. But I knew it all. I had this shit covered, right? I was going to. Well, wait, did you know? <laughs> was, you, so yeah, you. Kane was already out here. Oh, okay. My friend Mike Mahaley, there was a few guys from Jacksonville, Florida that were instrumental in helping me make my way in California. Oh. And they were already there. Or here. You sure. Yeah, like I'm in Jackson. Got gators home. outside. Yeah. 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 Swimming. And uh, yeah, so I was like, I, I just, I have to get out there. I have to get out there. Because I knew like there was something happening with skateboarding mm -hmm. that I feel like I might have a chance at this. And Kane would... Bird. You feed me some stuff. Probably 17. You're getting good and you're, it's mm -hmm. about that time. Yeah. And uh, that's what I thought. And uh, so I did. And... and uh, I, Greyhound bus was wild at that age by How myself. Long? What was that like four days? Four and a half days. <laughs> well, where do you sleep? Do you sleep on the bus? Yeah. It just keeps driving. It keeps, well, it makes They stops. switch off drivers. Um, yeah, probably. switch off yeah, drivers. Yeah. They stop along the way. and, and Four and a half days of drink. driving. I mean, what a great experience. They dumped it yeah. Oh my God. Well, now I look at it like, yeah, because it just helped build either some character. It taught me a lot. And I was so excited to see mountains. I come from the flatlands. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd never seen any th mountains. So when we started getting into like El Paso and, you know, the the landscape started changing. I was just like, ah, I love this. Is that your first time like traveling pretty much? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd been to uh, Houston, Texas a few times or maybe once. 
in between that time and then down to Daytona and to Tampa. Mm, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, I'd bounced out of Jacksonville a little bit up to Tennessee. I actually went to Tennessee and skated a, uh, a big am contest at eye level. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That guy got in trouble for doing some weird shit. Billy yeah. Lane. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Billy Lane and Phil Ajal were on it, but, uh, yeah, I won a contest wasted there somehow. Wasted? Yeah. Just, Again? Well, they were calling my name, and I was out in the parking lot smoking and drinking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, wow. okay. And I went in there. I blew it in my first run. That's why I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the car and drink. I'm over it. And you won. And they called my name. <laughs> and I was like, what? He was like, dude, get in here. Your run's up right now. And I went in there. I don't know what it was, and everything fucking clicked. <laughs> <laughs> and it won. It's insane, man. Anyway, point being, back sure. to traveling. That was like the most of my travel at the time. Mm -hmm. so. Come to think of it, a lot of uh greyhound has probably helped out a lot of pro careers jamie thomas yeah yeah everybody's taking seen a lot of people taking greyhound 99 dollars at the time to make it out here from jacksonville florida 99 dollars for a four and a half day Just trip one way wow yeah. huh. so, did you have to sit next to anybody oh yeah it? i mean i met a lot of interesting people oh, sure. <laughs> i'm sure you had a lot of time yeah Oh man, uh, yeah. It was, there were some interesting characters, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so you get out to L.A. Oh no, I'm I'm assuming oh San Diego. Well, no, we stopped in L.A. first. Okay, um, but I was at that Greyhound bus station. That's when I was like my first experience of California, besides mm -hmm. driving through some of it. Um, and like I said, I was just I loved nature since I was a little kid and just always wanted to see the mountains. So that was really special for me Amazing. to to dr be on a bus and looking out the windows and yeah. seeing these these things and uh and coming into california it's just this feeling of just excitement sure like, you know, i knew i was like about to you know skate with kane and probably meet some cool people and it's an adventure and, yeah man. trying yeah. to do the skate thing wow. um and then uh yeah made our way to you're gonna love this so got we get to san diego or at least I love it. I'm sorry. I don't, know. I don't know what you love. Maybe you won't. <laughs> yeah. But I get to the Greyhound station and my first experience in California with, uh, and Kane, I was in contact with him the whole time. Mm -hmm. Kane picks me up from the Greyhound bus station. Didn't tell me who he's picking me up with or, you know, who he's picking me up with. It's a passenger. Yeah. So two passengers. One was Ted Newsom. Oh, wow. And the other was Jeremy Ray. Wow. Filming for secondhand smoke at the time. No <laughs> way. Wow. So I saw some of the stuff he did in secondhand smoke that day live. <laughs> the day you arrived. That my first day in California. And I was like, because I'd already knew who Jeremy Ray was. Oh, know? my God. And he was just like. I was like in awe, like, oh my God. I'm like, color video. Oh yeah. my God. Like, I'm supposed to come out to California and skate. And I was like, sitting down at the spots watching this dude do his no, thing. No, you really like, got a, thrown into it. At a pro like, level. Like, crazy. I was like, whoa, this is what it's going to take. I'm Nicest not. dude, though. <laughs> Nicest guy, right? Oh, Jeremy, yeah. just we're a, still friends today. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Do you remember what tricks they were that you yes. saw? Which ones were they? The, 360. Uh, the front three front. and the heel flip at the Sereno Valley Gap over the bush. Ooh, oh, okay. okay. Um, that was sick. And he mm. may have back heeled that thing, too. Dope. Mm -hmm. That day. But I know he back heeled the, the McDonald's bump flat over the three stair. Um, oh, the oh, one that's the, virtual the, reality. Virtual, yeah, yeah Danny Way skates it all the time. Yeah, it goes uh, right in, like, front down, the down the stairs. Yeah, so when yeah. you yeah. land, you right, right, drop right. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. back heel that. Yeah. Okay, um, he definitely heel flip that. I always wanted to skate that thing. How big was that thing? It was pretty. Long. Did the bump? Did the bump launch you, or was it just kind of a gradual yeah, I, incline? Once again, I you didn't skate it. I never skated it. I was just like in oh, awe yeah. that was a dude, crazy looking was spot doing his yeah. thing and i was just like man this is like magical dude that sereno valley bump yeah that, that, thing, was, that thing was pretty hard. good it, it was hard to skate but you would that was a if you hit, yeah. yeah if you could get the timing right it's good yeah but dude i did i did go back and try and skate that thing i'm like how i still to this day go there and i'm like how the hell did he do that shit yeah i mean it's hard to get speed to because side uphill and then to get the timing of the pop just yeah, right. Small go, wheels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like 48. <laughs> so powerful. I was like, yes, this is amazing. So, yeah, that was my first experience. In How amazing. Getting that. to know those guys. And, yeah, and then uh, Kane introduced me to Chris Markovich. He was staying with him at the time because of uh, color. Okay. And, and yeah. Mark Oblo. So I met all these dudes. Uh, That's and, insane. Yeah. I mean, you literally took a Greyhound bus cross country, four and a half days, and now you're in the mix of – filming you know watching these dudes yeah. fucking film these videos yeah and uh, you know once again uh, i want to give props to kane because i don't i probably won't talk about his skating so much because i was just a bit i was around it so much mm -hmm. and he's one of my favorite skaters still to today 
but everybody else he introduced me to, I took notice of because I'd already knew who they were. Right. You know? So it was like Kane was doing his thing too. I just wanted to clarify. Sure, that. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was like I already knew Kane. Like we're like brothers at the right. time. Right. So All I'm this honest. other stuff is is magical. Yeah. 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 Crazy. And then did you start filming? Of uh, to, and then once I was like already, I was drinking. Okay. So I was like, I was on a party run and like, yeah, I skated. We were out in California to do it. So I was having troubles trying to find my place, like where to stay. So Kane helped me out. Mike Mihaly helped me out. Um, and Markovich, I stayed at Markovich's house with, mm. with him. And, uh, and then I, you know, kind of, what do they call it? Uh, overstay my welcome, so to speak. Cause oh. I was, I was young, young minded and mm. drinking forties. I was so excited about the 40. And so all these dudes were trying to do their thing. And here I am, although I would skate, but I'm like excited about the 40. And so I'm just like skating, but partying. Like, it's just a, like, a, like, oh yeah. Hand in hand. A, yeah. Right. yeah. Neil right. 40 hands. Yeah, yeah. So I think I, I irritated, you know, some people and got on Markovich's nerves and he was like, Hey Kane, you know, your friend can't stay here anymore. Although Mark, you know, we're all friends now. Sure. Like, sure. At the time I was just doing what I felt I wanted to do. And <laughs> It didn't last long, but I was, I did get introduced to, uh, Oscar Jordan and Canton Russell, um, Canton Russell. and went skating. Yeah. With, with these guys at the time and Peter McBride. Okay. Oh, um, wow. yeah. So, uh, that's when chapter seven was going. Ah. So before I left, I had some, uh, I did some stuff on my skateboard enough to where those guys took notice and, and they showed McGill and told McGill and then he wanted me to ride for chapter seven. So that was like my first okay. real California sponsor. Wow. Um, Canton Russell. Like, and then I ran out of money and was <laughs> went back to Florida. You went back to Florida. <laughs> Another $99 bus ride. No. So Rodney Johnson, rest in peace, just um, passed away recently. Yeah. He was coming out on, he had a round trip ticket, but he was coming out here to live for good. Mm. And so we were all intertwined from Jacksonville. And so at this time, the way flying was, he was just on a one way trip, even though it was cheaper for him to buy a round trip. Yep. Mike Mihaly was living with Steve Barra at the time. That's when I met Steve Barra and I knew I was on my way out and Rodney was coming out. So I bought Rodney's ticket back and put it in my name. How they insane allowed that. is that? Oh, whoa. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't, of course, mom or dad. Well, some, sure. But my, still, I mean, just the fact that you could do that. Maybe yeah. Mahaley. I don't even know who got that for me, but they definitely I'd run pretty thin, you know, in a short amount of time. Were you and bummed? And accomplished very little. Well, it sounds like you got taken notice of yes. and, and you got uh, chapter seven boards, but then your, your money ran out and were you bummed to go back to Jacksonville? Yeah. Yeah. But I was like tail between my legs. Cause I was, when I was leaving, I'm like, I'm going to go do this. I'll show everyone. Right? And you're like, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. And I was back pretty quick. Like, oh. uh, well, why work. though? What about like, what about Kane? And I mean, he had his own thing going on. Yeah. Right? He can look after his buddy. Yeah. Not the whole time. Yeah. He did what he could do sure. for me. And, sure. and yeah, it's, I get it. It's like, he couldn't just babysit me all the time. And that's what it became. I was buying you food and probably forties, forties, <laughs> not no food. Just... It. He actually wouldn't do that a lot. Um, but I would get Markovich or one of these other two right. or Pablo or somebody to get God. me forties. <laughs> I just love the 40. Cause we didn't have them in Florida. Like, <laughs> the 40 oh, ounce why. bottle was so cool to me. Cause I'd see it in rap videos and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want forties. All what the time. were you drinking? Was it old E or was Mickey's. it Mickey's 40? Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. They were the most uh, affordable. And then St. Ides was a big thing at the time. So I had a couple St. Ides, Ides and they were so gross. Probably I mean, had some like Mickey's grenades and stuff uh, too. The yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Oh, but not, I would just do the, the 40s. 40s though. Yeah. yeah. You love the 40s. But the big mouths were pretty cool. Yeah, the big mouths. Mickey's yeah, big mouths. Yeah. <laughs> So I was, you know, like I said, drinking was already doing its thing, but I think I was so young that it, I was able to be productive mm -hmm. and at the time. Right. Not realizing, you know, later on it would be the demise, but at the time it was, I was having fun with You're it. You're doing your I thing. I was doing it. And right. I was like, yeah, drinking was normal. Yeah. It was normal where I was raised. It was just a normal thing. Well, I know you were drinking throughout like, you know, filming for uh, feedback mm -hmm. and all these videos, but was there a time where... It just clicked for you, like okay, I'm gonna film this part. I'm gonna like when when did it really start getting serious for you? Because that seems like right now, going back to Florida, it wasn't that 
Yeah, so I didn't. You weren't in it yet. No. You were just getting flowed and yeah, a couple it, things. Yep. And then I, I didn't realize what real work was. I had a couple restaurant jobs just to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was those were very short lived just to make enough money to get by to buy whatever I needed, with, whether it was booze, weed, or some food. And sure. Then I'd still bugging my parents at the time. This by now I'm like around 18 and I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm jonesing to go back to California. I need to get back out there. And, uh, out here so um yeah i was like man i gotta give it another shot so were you um, saving money no not at all i wish i was that smart i was okay no it just you were just working to get to to get by i was like not the brightest dude at all like with any of that stuff um unfortunately i just wasn't i did i never it was methodical like that in a way where it's like okay i'm gonna focus i like never had that like oh i'm gonna focus but I'm going to drink my way through this and do what I can to get by. Gotcha. So I wish that was the case, like, cause who knows, but, uh, anyway, it ended up the way it ended up. And so I was partying with a, a girl at the time and she was like wanting to go to California and oh. her name was Michelle. And we were high on ecstasy Okay. Oh, whoa. and we like, uh, mom, I'm out of here. You got in the, did got she... in the car. She packed up, I packed up and we started driving that to quick. That quick just and then I mean, it took a while this wore was like, off and yeah, then you're it, in wyoming and it was yeah. like what am I? it was brian children's one of brian children's ex-girlfriends at, oh wow well they were ex at the, he used to date her yeah but yeah so that's how i kind of met her is through him and then huh. we hit it off and in a wasted you know uh way right right right, right. <laughs> it's a crazy tuesday night how far like and then so it? i was like yeah let's go to california because that was my ride back out are you going to san diego with michelle are you driving to Yes. Do you have it all planned out in your head? Like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to Kane. I'm going to meet up with Kane. We're going to. You're like, I got a place to stay. <laughs> kind we had of, a place like, to I... stay, like with this uh, another friend. Uh, there's so many people from Jacksonville that like wanted to get the hell out of there that moved oh, out. Even surf friends. I oh, had wow. friends that surfed that were already making their way that I went to high school with. So oh. by this time, those guys were a little older, but they were already making their way in California. So, uh, fortunately had a place to go gotcha. that where I didn't have to bug Kane. And, uh, and yeah, so while we're driving, right. So it's an interesting part of the story. We get to Houston and I'm driving. I have a beer right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and from what I remember, this person runs a red light oh, and no. just smashes into Michelle's side of the car. Oh, but it, I don't know whose fault it was. It could have been me. I was drinking. Mm. But it happens to be some big time lawyer in Houston. So this is, so we get out of the car and make sure everybody's okay. Sure. Fortunately, we are. But it was a good, it was a good solid hit where it totaled the car. Okay. But we didn't know that at the time, so we had the car towed, and so we're arguing back and forth whose fault it was. Mm. And the guy was, the lawyer was like, "Hey, we have cameras. We can, we'll, we'll get the cops to pull that up." And we're trying to do it without cops coming into the picture. And then he was cool because he was in a rush and his car was fine, so he was like, took our insurance okay. and all that stuff. So it ended up, it seemed like it was working out, but this dude knew what he was doing. Right. And it may have been his fault because the way he was okay with taking off and then coming back to us later. But fortunately, there was a guy over here watched and saw the whole thing. His name is Dante. I'll never (laughs) forget him. Okay. And uh, he helped take care of us while we were in Houston. So the car was going to take a week to get fixed. And so we had to stay. We used the money, which was mostly her money. Mm. She was like doing better than I was at the time. And so she was helping support me and... Uh, I had a little bit to work with, but sure. not much. And uh, so I'm starting to, we're starting to come down off of this high that we started driving because Houston's maybe what, 16 hours or something away from Jacksonville. So mm. we get in this car accident and we're stuck there. But Dante saw the thing and we made friends with this guy, Dante. And uh, he was showing us around and he had this crazy story where he was trying to do good. He was in these gangs and he literally was telling us all this crazy stuff. Oh, wow. And, uh, While we were there, uh, a few days go by, Dante even took us into his neighborhood, which was real sketchy. And he's like, hey, don't worry if you're with me, you're going to be fine. And he took us into his neighborhood to where he lived. Oh, wow. It was like in these projects area in Houston. It's pretty crazy. And and, uh, so a couple of days go by, we find out, we go to the car place 
Dante, we have his number. We know how to contact him. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, I didn't have a cell phone. She didn't have a cell phone. This is all like payphone phone sure. stuff. And uh, the cars find out it's completely totaled. So we got to figure out how we're getting the rest of the way to California, which ended up being a Greyhound. Okay. But in the meantime, we get a call from one of Dante's cousins. Dante got shot. Oh, wow. oh no. But he's not dead. Okay. He got shot at. And while he was walking down the street, because there was some old stuff that mm. arose that he was telling us about. And I keep thinking like, damn, we were walking around with this guy. Yeah. And that could have been us. So Dante ended up in the hospital and we're calling him and he's trying to still help us out from the hospital no but from way. getting shot. Oh <laughs> Dude, my God. Full drive by. Jeez. And, uh, yeah, and we're just like scared. We're like, oh my god! Well, what if you know the guys are looking for us because sure. they may have saw us, and we're in this hotel, and so we're freaking out. Like we're young. I'm like, yeah, you yeah. know, 18, and she's young. We're like, what the hell's going on? And right. So we get Greyhound buses, okay, or a Greyhound bus together to go to California, and we're gonna, you know, have this life together and all this stuff. But like I said, the drugs were wearing off. Oh. That alcohol we're starting to come down because we couldn't afford alcohol and started getting down to the nitty gritty and i'm like even though i obviously was like she's a sweet girl but it was a drug induced like yeah. exciting like connection and then the reality started hitting right and then we got to california and reality started hitting with her too but i was really lame and cruel to oh, this really? girl Fortunately, I've been able to make amends to her through sobriety like oh, later amazing. on, but it wasn't, I wasn't cool at all. And I was lame in front of people and I was just a big dick because I was trying to just get her to go. And you were trying, because, you were trying to push her away. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, um, I eventually did and she got on a train and went back to Florida wow. and now she's got like a family and she's married and all this stuff. Oh, uh, cool. So, but it went years without talking to her and I was just not a good not a good dude back then and well especially to her you know? huh. wow so uh but it was all about me and i needed to make the skate thing happen right and so i uh i was skating the park one day in california um and uh tony magnuson uh approached me mm. at the park wow um and asked me if i wanted to ride for evil evil skateboards oh, sick. and i was like a big h street fan as yeah. a kid and I knew that that was Tony Magnuson at the time. And uh, I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I was like, yeah, of, of course, I would love to. He's like, yeah, just come by and get some boards and all this stuff. So, wow. So the Evol thing started happening. And that's, I'd met Danny Way around that time. And then I was trying to get a job at XYZ. And then eventually I did that. Riding for Evil, I met up with Skin Phillips to shoot my first photo for a checkout. So this is a, a probably a sped up version. Yeah. Um, but that's how things kind of happen within a six month span. It was uh, okay. Well, I mean, pretty quick though. Six yeah. month spans uh, not bad. Yeah. So I shot the uh, shot the photo and and uh, what was your checkout photo? It was uh, at the lumber yard. You know the the bump to you know in Encinitas the lumber yard that whole zone. Uh, it's where the lumber yard actually where, used to be, but there's stores there now. Where, mm -hmm. where like Nixon's at? Where Nixon is? Yeah. Right there. That that bump was right there. Mm -hmm. There was like a bump. To rail that Rob Welsh did a front nose on it and hopped out years okay. ago. You may remember right that. Right in Boulevard. What? I'm trying to remember. But. Um, anyway, so instead of me skating it like it was a ledge, like a bump to ledge, I like to go fast and keep it basic. So I would, I hold ass and 180'd over it. And there's oh. a grass gap and then there was a curb on the other side. Josh Stewart was filming. At the oh, time. sick. Um, yeah, so Josh Stewart ended up coming out and staying with us at the house I was staying at. We lived next door to Jeff King, and he was doing all the juggling shit with Laban at the time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you were uh, caught clean. Yeah. Yes, oh, wow. yes. Jeff King still today. We are close, close friends. We still talk. We still hang out sometimes. Like, he lives right down the street from me. He's just an awesome dude. Like, That's rad. Back then, we hated each other. Oh, did you? Well, yeah. he hated me more because okay. I was... He was a vegan at the time, and I would cook ribs, and I would just like open the door and let the smoke go. Uh, yeah, oh, was <laughs> I, you poke, I was that guy. You were like, him. Yeah, yeah, and I was still like I said when I was drinking, I was just oh my god, cocky and lame, and just being an asshole intentionally. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, anyway, so yeah, that's uh, Michelle went back. Okay. I, uh, well, you started. You, you said you started uh, evil. Yeah, and then what? 
but you said you started working at XYZ as well. Yeah. Because you ended up writing for XYZ Platinum. I, I did. Yeah. And that was uh, in the after I went back to Florida this next time. Okay. So oh. Brian Childers and I took a road trip back to Florida. Back to Florida. Okay. Yeah. You weren't going back permanently. You were just going back. Yeah. So or... the idea. Well, here's the the idea was to. Uh, was to take the road trip. Brian was pro for Santa Cruz at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, let me, let me go back to the X, Y, Z thing real quick. So I worked at the store for a short time. Mm -hmm. This was within that six months. I'd shot the photo for the checkout. Yeah. I worked at the store and I was like, that's what was going to be my job. So I had no intention of doing a road trip back to Florida with Brian at this time. Okay, gotcha. So I was going to work at XYZ, continue skating. That's how I was going to make my money. So Danny and Tommy were cool with me working there. But I had the big notion that I was going to go tray flip the Carlsbad Gap. Whoa. The big one. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was like, I got this. Because before there was a small one. Yeah. There was a small yeah. Carlsbad Gat and then the big one. And but they the took big the one. small one away. And nobody had done it at the time, but I was decent at that trick. Like when I learned tray, I'd rather tray flip than kick flip. Even mm-hmm. until today, that's what I'd rather warm up with. It's just a real comfortable trick mm-hmm. for me. Kelly, you do them pretty good. Well, it's more because you don't have to use your ankles as much. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? You're, it's just, you like it that way too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do them way good. Oh, thanks. Really good. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I was, I was comfortable with that trick. And at the time, I knew I was like, I needed something to get a little maybe extra recognition and and i was like oh it's like danny way and you know he skated that thing and i'm like working for him and i wanted to impress him had you been there not much okay i had seen it and then uh yeah i hadn't really okay i didn't really yeah (laughs) okay i just got big when i got there to trade for because everybody came out they're like oh because i was like i got this claim going and now i didn't know that news traveled Like oh, that. Yeah. We're like, oh, somebody's going to do something like that. Everybody's showing up to watch. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, this is a real thing. And so uh, I'm like, all right. I mean, obviously, everybody's there. Tommy's wanting to film it. And I'm like, I already claimed it. And I'm like, all right, I got to go for it. So I uh, I uh, ollied it one time and stuck, <laughs> like, you know, it's uphill landing uphill and land. stuck and got tossed forward. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to try it. I didn't even like make the ollie. I was like, I'm just going to go for it. Right. So I tried the first one and actually, believe it or not, I had the right speed and I flicked it and caught it with the front foot, but I couldn't carry it down. So I kicked it away. Yeah. And then I was like, holy shit, this is actually possible. Very next go. Boom. Flip it. Gets weird under my feet. I go straight to my heels on that uphill landing. Shatter my heels. Shatter. Just done. Yeah. It's a hell of a heel bruise. It it was bad. Wow. Like you actually broke? Crawling to the bathroom. Didn't go to the hospital for it. What? But um, it was definitely a really, really gnarly injury. Both heels? I was crawling to the bathroom for about a month. On both heels, yeah. What? If you're... Why aren't you going? I mean, obviously, in insurance, money, but, oh, <laughs> drinking. Uh. Well, drinking and no insurance, and I'm in California and no money. Yeah. And then I could work at XYZ anywhere. They're like, dude, I showed up and I was like on cr- crutches after a couple of weeks oh went by, and I'm like barely getting around. They're like, dude, you can't work here anymore. It's like, we're not firing you, but you, you shouldn't just be here because you can't do anything. Did you eventually yeah. get it checked out? No. No. What? Yeah. It so. just healed up on its own. Yeah. So, How long did that take? A solid two, three months At until least, it started yeah. feeling good. So that's when this, it started healing. I started getting around and then that's when uh, I was like desperate and, and Brian Childers brought up this idea. Um, uh, you know, rest in peace to him too. I yes. love that guy. Yes. Um, man, all these friends. I know. Like God, dude, it's we're crazy. Good. It's wild. Yeah. So uh, he, um, he, he was a pro for Santa Cruz and then he was like, Hey, let's, uh, let's take a road trip. Cause I, he's got to film a video part. I could be the filmer. Jeff Kendall's going to front the bill and the camera. Perfect. And uh, and I rode for Indy at the time, so I was like, I you know, Jeff Kendall was like, yeah, we'll give you a little bit of road trip money to take a road trip, film all the way back to Florida. Perfect. Yeah, it was awesome. We took acid the whole time. Okay. We got wasted. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, didn't did Childers did have a trick in the Santa Cruz video that I filmed? It was a kickflip over a rail. So. He did a couple things. I did like one or two things and the filming was just horrible. None of it, neither one of us knew how to film. We didn't know what we were doing. Sure. But we had this whole con thing going like we, you know, we fooled Jeff Kendall into thinking we were like really going to get this going. Got one trick out of it. Yeah. Like a two week mission. 
Yeah, so and we drove through blizzards. I mean, we had the funnest time. Now I look back and we we did we did some crazy stuff. That's and funny. I remember we were playing like a a game where it's like we were driving through a blizzard and we had to roll down all the windows so the snow was flying, flying through. through. <laughs> and whoever rolled up the window first. Lost. Uh, yeah, lost. It was just that stupid game where it's like game is that? <laughs> I remember I never driven through a blizzard. We, so yeah, I don't know. we didn't even it was yeah, it was like through Montana. Oh my or so. God. It was so insane. Whose car was this? It was his brand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I'll just never forget. We're just like this. Like oh, icicles hanging <laughs> yeah. from us. And we're like, I'm not fucking doing oh, it. Man. I'm not rolling no, up the windows. I need like I need the heater on. I need the heat seaters on. Yeah. I need like <laughs> I need, Any a, I need a person with Gore-Tex that. jacket. <laughs> and we were out of our minds. We were smoking tons of weed. Like sure. I said, we had acid for some reason. We got in Santa Cruz and we picked up off the street. Oh, my so we God. Were, yeah, we were on a good one and not caring and just being young and dumb. And <laughs> supposed to be like working. Right, which, right, right. <laughs> Anyway, so, so and oh, Evol, Evol helped, oh, yeah. helped front that trip too. Okay, for me, so Santa Cruz for him, and then Evol and Jeff Kendall because I was on Indy did help a little as well. So yeah, we we came together and mm-hmm. and, and got nothing done <laughs> with and other how, people's money. How <laughs> yeah. you said it was That's two more? Yeah, two weeks. So you drove out to there and then drove back. No, we drove back there and then I uh, got stranded there and just couldn't make it back. I couldn't pull it together. I, oh wow, I was. Yeah, partying, and mm. Brian made his way back because he had wealth so he had in his family. And, he had sponsors yeah. and wealth in his family. Okay. His great grandfather was uh, the uh, one of the founders of Coca Cola. I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew Childers, but yeah. I didn't know that he never, you know, had to have a real job, so to speak. Wow. But one of the most amazing human beings. He's great. But it's like he had this unlimited income that he wasn't really, I mean, yeah, he was generous and would help his friends, but he, he never flaunted it. He never like told people about this. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I knew crazy. him for a long time. He lived yeah. out here and yeah. I, I never even knew that. He never yeah. would, you know, boast or brag about it. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's like he would play like he's struggling at times just because he knew like some friends would get close to him and okay. mooch. And I was probably that guy too at times. And it's tough when you come from a family like that. Yeah. You know, you really, I mean, why are these people my friends? Yeah. You know, it, it happens in skating too. You know, you being a professional skateboarder, mm-hmm. you're surrounded by people and you're like, well, why is this person my friend? Yeah. I mean, comes kind of goes around. I mean, fuck, you have money. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. Raj is my friend. Yeah. Neither of you guys have money. <laughs> oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh. I don't know, man. Check my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're stuck back in Jacksonville. Yep. When the hell does yep. all this? When do you start getting sponsored and start doing it? Yeah. So it's like I found it, it, it seems like a struggle, but it seems like you were actually doing it because you were getting help with these trips and you were getting a little taste of sponsorships. I and, was. So it's kind of a little 50 50 almost. Yeah. And I was, so I got a little taste and I knew like, okay, it was going to take more this next time around. And I, uh, I found a girlfriend, mm. um, at the time and she l- was going to school in Gainesville. So I lived in Gainesville for a little while mm. and, and she was, you know, fully helping support my habits. And okay. then I, fi- I got a job at the deli, the local deli, which I hated. And then I started getting miserable and, and it was probably because of the alcohol of, usage and mm, abuse and sure and weed but i was blaming it on like oh it's because i'm in florida and it's because i'm not doing what my heart tells me i'm supposed to be doing which is skating right right and, and so i started like just kind of whining and crying to her about it and she finally um and once again i wasn't a, a decent guy or treat her well at mm. all and she was just super sweet and took me in and took care of me and like i said i've been able to make things right i just want to clarify that as the years came sure, up, uh, right. But anyway, at the time it was just lame, and she was just like, "I'm gonna get you a ticket. I'm buying you a ticket to go to California because it seems like that's the place where you're gonna be happy." And she like, wow, took. She got me a ticket and crazy. We said our goodbyes, and she was like, "I'll come out and visit you and this and that." Another and, Greyhound uh, ticket. Oh. No Greyhound. She got me a plane. I get your plane. Greyhound. What? I was my second time on a plane, and my first time was when I bought the ticket from Rodney and right. flew back. And then my second time. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say you're getting to know these uh, Greyhound bus drivers. Yeah. But no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, she got me a plane ticket, man, and uh, it, it was cool. But this was the time where I was like, you know what? I'm not. There's no way. If I'm gonna be a bum, I know this is like kind of crazy 
thoughts. But the, at the time, I was like, if I'm going to be a bum, I'm not going to be a bum in Florida. I'm going to be one in California because at least it's beautiful. It's yeah. warmer. It's a, yeah, it's a it's beautiful a place, place to be a bum. Yeah, sure. If I was going to go that Work route. Work outside. Yeah. 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 I know. I went down there it's earlier. Very, it was, yeah. It's uh, kind of sad. It is. Yeah. Very, you know, it's funny. It crossed my mind when I was walking over there and I go, dude, that could have been me. It, yeah. Damn. That could have been me. And yeah. I was I was heading that way. Anyway, and I ended up semi there. But anyway, so I got it. I knew I was like, all right, I got to really make this happen. This is my third and final shot. I'm like, you know, my third time in California. Three like, strikes. But I'd learned some stuff along the way. I was like, I knew what I had to do. Okay. And I was like, I'm going to bug Dave Swift. I'm going to start bugging filmers and I'm going to put my ass to work. You're going to work. Yeah. yeah I'm going to work. Right. And meaning skate my ass off sure. and have fun along the way. And, uh, and that's what I did. And I, it, Swift wouldn't go shoot with me, uh, for a while because he was busy shooting with Steve Barra at the time. Okay. And, uh, and I just kept, I stayed persistent Yeah. and, uh, and I may have gotten annoying. And then I was, fortunately I linked up with a, I met a guy named John Holland. You guys probably know who it is. <laughs> John <laughs> Holland. Yeah. He's a pretty good filmer. And, uh, John best. is still best. a good, weird texting as we speak or Amazing. not as we speak but earlier greatest history. greatest dude so good yeah, yeah. and uh talented too talented. very talented um and so we we became friends we hit it off and uh i started filming with him and swift finally decided to go uh shoot with me and uh we got something it was uh the uh it was a gap to rail in del mar um for you remember the photo issue 98 that cost in back nose blunt, uh, yep. hubba hideout. Oh. Yep. That was my first, besides my checkout that came out while I was in Florida that last time. Checkouts are cool, but that. this is, yeah. this is big. <clears throat> I forgot to mention while I was in Florida that last time was my checkout came out. So it was cool to see my first photo in the magazine. Oh yeah. Uh, on the shelf in the grocery mart. That's, that's amazing. That yeah. skin shot. At that's the great. Yard, so, um, yeah, back to, uh, yeah, my first photo. So Swift, I didn't know that he always liked a surprise. Oh, okay. And that was really cool. So I had no idea it was coming out and I'm looking through this magazine. And so I see big full page because that magazine was bigger than the average. Yeah. It was like a bigger size. Yeah, the photo yeah. ones were, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm looking, I'm looking and then I'm like, oh my God. And there was a little like caption about like me bugging him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? <laughs> took, Amazing. Took and took a chance with me. So I'm like, oh my god, that's so awesome! I have a full page, right? Full page. Yeah. I'm flipping through. A couple pages later, spread of the sequence of that wow. gap to rail. Wow. Wait a minute. So you got a still of the gap to rail? Yeah. And what was what'd you do? Right up. What'd you do? It was gap to board slide. Gap to board slide. It was a unique spot. It was around a bush. You had to cut, and right when you cut, you have to ollie out. It was nobody's um, wait uh, which one which it's a blue rail it is right off of del mar heights road and alex wilms i think to this day is the only one to skate it he did a back gap to back 50 on it and that was like a few dude, few years ago dude, that dude is gnarly bro yeah, yeah alex <laughs> used to do my skate program and, oh right yeah alex right. Is, he's, a, he's well. one of the good oh, ones you, you taught him well yes <laughs> i don't take credit for his skill set because he he had had that but i definitely yeah, i gave him some direction yeah. <laughs> helped him out. Yeah, I, don't, I never want to take credit for anybody's you know no that's cool though but you sure. know just that whole program stuff is just all mentorship stuff sure too. It's sure like, hey, just give him some guidance and yeah. being a good yeah. example i wonder why the, the sequence was a couple pages away like you would think it would be like a, a thing yeah so the proof, proof is in the pudding proof is in the pudding yep. that yeah, was the that's coolest what it was. Shit yeah. yeah i think that's maybe where the, the okay yeah it was one of that right up it was, uh, but they didn't they wouldn't do that in the photo annual would they yeah i, I don't know maybe i should have brought that uh, um anyway yeah so that was like i was already excited first of all to be in a magazine period but with costin on the cover oh, yeah and and then they have the full page and then the spread in there with the sequence. I was like, oh my god, this is a dream. I this is my it. dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and it was uh, this was um, a couple years after um, my second time to California, mm. and so that's when it all started happening. And that's when people started noticing I was wearing a platinum shirt, and Danny loved that, of course. Yeah. And so that's when the platinum X Y Z thing started mm. happening, and okay. I was Kane was taking me up whenever it was Armageddon distribution to X Y Z and platinum and Plan B skateboards. You ever got the tattoo? Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't go there i do have tattoos but yeah i didn't do that one yeah yeah so, so did they put you on the team so here's the, here's the cool part so this is how it went uh danny was like hey we want to we want to take you street skating um you know we're gonna get it's like a tryout 
Oh. So I go out street skating with Danny Way, Colin McKay, like Jake Stewart was there. Sean Rogers was filming. Uh, I forgot who was. Maybe Sean was driving. Um, it's a heavy session. Yeah, maybe it was Moses. Oh wow, Damn. Moses Akonin. I could be wrong. Like I said, vague memory. Sure, I sure, was, sure. I was on the sauce a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, it was a oh. Train wreck. Train wreck. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 I think it was amazing. Al- Alex Gall. Yeah, okay. That's who it was. Gnarly so. dudes. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Like I said, heavy but session. But it was like wow. my time to like show like, hey, you know, I, I can do this. And so I was like, first it's, of all, I was still getting to know Danny and, and Colin and all these guys. But I was just like, I'm in the van with these dudes. Like crazy this pretty cool this is like a dream come true because i grew up watching those guys in the videos you know hell yeah, yeah. And then you pull up to a mani pad yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so we went to the oso parkway school actually that's where i'm from dude hey, the yeah. ledge off stairs yeah yep yep so we went there i got footage to prove it because <laughs> so, <laughs> i was like hey i'm i'm gonna go for it you what'd know? you do and so i did a couple different things at a couple different spots there okay just, because that place is flooded oh you skated cool stuff. i trip out on that you skate you skated uh yeah it's called Los flores is a school but you skated up and off the up, two the big like two, ollie th- up the four stair and yeah, then the, Big, trick over the two stair, the yeah. big two block. You were the first person I ever saw skate that. And yeah. I lived there. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was a quick one. Yeah, real quick. Yeah. Mm. It, it was, was like no you land I, and you're popping right away. No way I could ollie up four stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. And then I switch, switch flipped and switch front side flip. The, uh, the, the long, three, three. long three. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you had a good day. I had a good day. And it was a good enough where Danny and... It was like, okay, let's put them on. You know, wow. So you got, so now you're on the team. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Wow. And Don't then, have to work in the store anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, I wasn't, I'd already, that, yeah, yeah. the, the heels guys. ruined that. Yeah. The, heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Carlsbad gap. Right, right, right. Yeah, which Josh Casper ended up going in tree. He did. Thing, That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Did he, do I, he did a lot of shit. Did he? What did he do? Hard flip it with a keg spraying up Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Man. Like, I'm like 99 red balloons. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did he, no. he tray flipped it in trilogy, mm-hmm. and then he tray flipped yeah. it in a four and one randomly. It was yeah, just did it again yeah. in a four and yeah, one like years later. Oh, maybe he forgot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe he forgot. He heel yeah. flipped yeah. it. Tray flipped it. Yeah. X Y Z or platinum didn't because you you didn't turn pro till you got on Decca. Exactly. So, so how long did that uh, platinum last? So what what happened was platinum plan B and X, Y, Z were going through some stuff. Mm-hmm. And so Arto actually got sent uh, whenever Danny went to California, uh, California, went to Europe and found this kid named Arto. He was a kid at the time. And he, he came back and he was like, I guess everybody wanted Arto, but Danny had his Danny power. Where he's yeah. like, no, yes. you're coming with me. Like, you're mine. And so he did that to Arto. And so he came back. He goes, hey, there's this kid from Europe. He's going to stay with you at your house. Because Danny had a family at the oh, time. So okay. he was like, didn't want young kids staying in his house, I guess. So he, Arto came and stayed with us. Couldn't even speak a lick of English. Me and John Holland. No and way. We had a couple of roommates at the time. And and uh, and so we he was on Platinum. And so we started filming for the Platinum um, Crimes and Misdemeanors video. Oh. Yeah. Which had yeah. a very, very short part in. Why? <laughs> because I like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see a theme. Yeah. I, mean, I see a theme. I literally, it's crazy. I, I have this, I have a really good work ethic, but when I'm partying, that is 50% of what I got. And Right. Uh, unfortunately. So at the time I was like, but what I did was good enough to get in the video. So when I skated, I would get some good stuff. It just wasn't an abundance of it. It gotcha. wasn't a lot. Right. But it was worthy enough. At the, you know, so sure, was, sure. Maybe it was only four things, but it was worthy enough. There I you think. go. But either way, so uh, yeah, we, we started filming for that. Arto and John and I took a trip to San Francisco and uh, we skated the gap to rail that uh, I think Cairo was the first person to uh, skate it in uh, four flat seven. It was like a brown rail. Oh, the uh, one in Sacramento? Up, yeah. The one he nose grinded? Yeah. Is it Sacramento? I think it's Sacramento. Sacra- green. It? Well, I'm not trying that. to think. The one he had to cover, nose grinded. Yeah, he ended up, he grinded the hub on the side too, and he covered, back, or nose grinded it, but he board slid it first. Back then, he had only gapped a board slid it. But yeah, he nose grinded that thing. Uh, Arto gapped to front boarded. I gapped to lip it. Same old wow. tricks. Gap to lip, gap lip, fakey. Huh. <laughs> Damn, dude. So we got some stuff done on that trip. And uh, so we come back and not knowing all this stuff's happening with XYZ and Plan B. Mm. Um, you know, it's behind the scenes business sure. stuff. They're not going to share with us. Arto's just killing it. I'm like, dude, who's this kid? And 
he's amazing and wow. another really close friend of mine till this day you know? oh my god yeah. we need to get arto on the show yes bro. please yeah. let's go to hawaii Oh yeah, what? dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you guys. You're <laughs> yeah. yeah, his property is amazing. Oh. It's been right across from Sharks Cove. You can go snorkeling. It's at the North Shore. It's no just gators. Beautiful. No, sure. but <laughs> <laughs> Sharks Cove is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty safe, but it's called Sharks Cove. Oh, it sounds yeah. scary. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, so we we come back, and I guess there's all kinds of stuff mm. happening, and. Uh, at this time, I'd I had gotten enough footage where John Holland was like, "Hey, I want to make you a sponsor me tape because the platinum thing was looking a little okay. fritzy." What was this platinum? Was it about a year, or mm-hmm. was it even longer, or less than that? I don't remember. It may have been less than that, really. Yeah, give or take. I was huh. like, maybe, yeah, twenty twenty one at the time. Huh? Flash in the pan, man. Yeah. So uh, it went pretty quick. Wow. And so I was still. On platinum, but it, like I said, there, there was word getting around that mm. it might not last. And Danny, like Plan B, had already went under, and Danny was going to ride for platinum. And I was like, so I like, cool, I'm going to be teammates with Danny Wynn. Yeah. But and then Danny pulled out of that because Alien Workshop jumped in. Oh, so, gotcha. That's when he got on Alien. I remember that. Yeah. Um, and then Flip was already starting to talk to Arto, mm. and so we all kind of it was being dismantled. It, yeah. All yeah. Of it. yeah. Huh. And that's when John was like, hey, he made me a really sick sponsor me video i think i may have it or somebody has it um i was excited right, I about I um know. it's uh um and kane was like hey i'm gonna take this up to rodney mullen because he was on uh not city stars a team at the time okay mm-hmm. yeah wait yeah, yeah. kane was yeah no he wasn't on was he he was on a team he was on uh he was on city stars he, yeah after 18 he was never on a team dude i think he was yeah at the beginning yeah for, they had four pros at one point. He was, was supposed to be on. They I photoshopped, they, they, they photoshopped that, him out of the team ad. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, I'm, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. He was on, on like, for that. small. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't check know. That on it was quick. Like that. Okay. And then the City Stars City and stars. Cream, all that stuff was being created. And, okay. You know, the stuff's always moving at Dwindle like that. Yeah, yeah wild. that's true. But, so, he sent your tape to Rodney Mullen. So, that's yeah, huge. I was freak i was like no i was like he's not gonna like my skating at all because i skated just i was just jumping down stuff i was like there's i had this vision in my head that like rodney doesn't like any other kind of skating for some reason right right, right? right and i'm right. like there's no way he's not going to be attracted to it at all and so i was like all insecure and he's like trust me dude rodney's super cool i'm gonna take it up there wow doesn't mean it's gonna happen but i'm gonna show him yeah I went up there showed him and i guess rodney liked it day one liked it and I didn't know this. This was behind my back. Right. I mean, even though he told me he was taking it. So um, we get a call one day. Uh, I think John can vouch for this, but John answered the phone. And I don't think John believed it either, but it was Rodney Mullen. And uh, and uh, so I guess he talked to him for a second and he was asking for me. And John was like, hey, uh, <laughs> Rodney Mullen, I think, is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no way. Who's pranking me? Right. Like, Bull. He goes, no, it's it's his voice. Like I, It sounds like Rodney. And I was like, you know, like little kid stuff. Like, yeah. You know, this little kid was just like, why? You know, so he, uh, I got on the phone and it, it was Rodney. And what did he say? He asked me to come up and meet him in person. He, he wanted, wanted to watch me tape. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I wanted to see what you're <laughs> made of. Maybe that's all the work I did for Decca. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, I went up there, man. It's just amazing. That call alone. I was just mm-hmm. like, okay, dream lift. Sure. Yeah. Photo in the mag. Call from Rodney Mullen. Danny Way was backing me for a minute. Crazy. Uh, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I retired. <laughs> um, but not really. So I went up there with Kane one day and and, and met Rodney and uh, and he told Shrugi. Shrugi was the team manager for World. And uh, this is before Decca was being created. And gotcha. He was like, put this put this kid on a strong flow, take him through the warehouse. And I went just went joy. Yeah. Just yeah. so much stuff. I was like excited, man. It was really cool. Sick. Um and so, yeah, that turned into uh, a pretty heavy uh, sponsor, and I was still continuing to skate, and the partying was still lingering around too, but okay. I was continuing to skate and produce stuff and started filming. That's when John 
And Ty asked me to film a part for Trans World. Gotcha. That's where the feedback comes in. Okay. So it was when I, the world thing started happening, and then they're like, "Okay, we're going to do like road trip, and you know, let's start putting together your footage." Because some of that stuff that he took up there, the sponsor me stuff, hadn't been seen yet, hadn't been used. Okay, right. And it's John Holland filming, so that it's worthy to put in a video. Yeah, and those guys were, you know, Ty was at Trans World. At the the, time. Yeah, so, yeah. So, right. Wow. Was, so yeah, we did the road trip out to AZ with Rally and. So uh, was it, that the one Muska? Yeah, yeah, it was the day. Oh, that was the day <laughs> <laughs> where Muska was on fire, oh and he went to like God. eight spots. Oh yeah, we Onstar. all went with him, and I was like, after every spot, it was a one. Of, it was a great trip, man. It was so awesome. The people involved, everybody that was around skating with, it was the you know. A young, all of us were young. It was sure. like Jeff Rally and Arto oh and God. Jason Dill, Willie Santos. Wow. Dude, it's so <laughs> sick. <dude>. Um, <laughs> and then the, we met the Muska out there and we picked up Ali Bilala and Jim Greco at somebody's house while we were out there too. Wow. So we had this yeah. van full of... Dude, that whole trip, that's when the, uh, Greco described what mob was. That was it. I like, was in the uh, room. In yeah. the, yeah. That was <laughs> in the hotel room. I watched that live. What? Yeah. yeah. That's it, amazing. Yeah, it was classic. <laughs> Holy shit. So that, that was amazing. So I was being productive. I was like, I was feeling it. You were and doing it, And yeah. things were clicking and 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 whenever muska would skate he's so just positive and having I mean, it's hard not to skate with him yeah, yeah. he Every, makes you have fun yeah, yeah. and want to skate and he's motivated i mean he was i was just mind-blowing dude i was like this dude's for real no right. joke and he's smiling the whole time yeah. he's got his boom box set up i was like i like this dude man this is cool <laughs> how, could, how could you not uh, like it? yeah 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 so uh it was very inspiring. So I remember we we went to so many spots that day and filmed so much stuff. But he filmed the most, of course. Yeah. A, a couple of us got a couple things here and there. But I remember just I was so tired a couple of times where I was like, dude, I, I can't skate anymore. And I'd already got a couple of clips and I was like, I'm not feeling it. And then we pull up to another cool spot that was a handrail spot. Right. And Muska starts charging. I'm all. All right, I, got, I guess I got, I got to get out and get some, and so I did a couple more times, and that was part of my feedback. What, a, oh, part. Wow. what about was it the same trip where that security guard was like, "Break your leg"? I hope. Oh no, no, what? Stop break right your leg. there, buddy. Yeah, stop right there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just recently, uh, I was out there and I went to that ledge that now it's like you can't skate it, mm. but uh, I went and saw that hubba. That was the first time he, he was right there. So he's trying to get us to leave, but yeah, that was the same night, same trip, and. Um, he was trying to get us to leave, and uh, I didn't know he was going to be at the bottom <laughs> at all because it's the, dark. Well, it's dark, and you come around a corner to that mm. ledge, and it was it was a good twelve stair hubba. And right when you ollie, you can see the bottom, but I couldn't see him until I ollie. That's oh, wow. why I was so committed through that. I was like, I'm committed on the the five zero. Right. And then I realized he's at the bottom, but I'm in, I'm like, I'm in this. Yeah, but you, yeah, dude, you the crazy it. part was that neither of you guys flinched. No, and he swiped <laughs> his hands through my legs while I came off the bottom of the 5-0. And it's like his hand went right through. I mean, I fell, I landed on the 5-0 yeah. and then fell. So this is in your video, but this yeah, is in yeah. the video. That's feedback. the start of yeah. the yeah. opening. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. the yeah. opening. Part. I think, you know, what was crazy about those things, like the fall and that opening is like we got, the skaters, the kids got to see who you were, yeah. a little more personality yeah. just behind the skating. That's why that was kind of cool. Voiceovers, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. The feedback, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah And yeah. giving feedback about the spot or the the moments that you have, mm -hmm. like, you know, Jason Dill and Anthony Van England talking about their bond together. Seriously. As yeah. yeah. Yeah, so cool. Even Andrew Reynolds was in that video. Yep. Dude, that's my favorite era of Reynolds right there. It's a good one. Well, yeah, I mean, he is, all eras are sick. I get it. Yeah, you because you got the baggy yeah, pants back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Even today's era is sick. Oh yeah, Andrew, we got you. Right, yeah. right, 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 all right. eras are sick. But one thing I did notice about feedback is uh, a lot of night footage, a lot of lighting stuff up. That was like Ty's mission. Ty well, if you're in Arizona that. in the summertime, that's what you want to do. That's true too. Yeah, yes. but we skated in the day too. We yeah. had some daytime. You had a lot so. of night footage. I there was. I feel like Ty back then, it just, it looked so good on film, mm -hmm. you know, like the night with it lit up spots and everything. And it was mostly like lit up on the spot and not the roll away. So you'd land for a second and then roll God. into black. Yeah. You couldn't see even coming up to spots sometimes. Yeah. You're just like, okay, you, you're off and then you're into the light and then you're doing your stuff. Do you ever trip out when you shot photos at nighttime on like, Oh God. Yeah. Sparkles? Tiba was on that trip with yeah. us, by the way. Okay. Oh, and was shooting photos and I'll never forget one of right in the middle of my line, you can actually see it in the video. 
do a front board, but his flash, one of his, or no, yeah, one of the lights, there's flash or something messed up. But the, yeah, sometimes at night, and I was hitting the bigger rail. So it was a smaller rail to start, and then I went to go lip slide the bigger rail and just went oh. like right in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I ended up doing it, but it was like, it's, yeah, those it's, it's always scary. Yeah. It's so hard. It's about sequence. Oh, yeah. At oh, night, my God. The worst. I mean, so I'm skidding a ledge and yeah. j- dealing with I, like that. It's yeah. the worst. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine doing a fucking <laughs> real t- yeah. twenty stair rail. Yeah, yeah. It's gnarly. Well, when, you know, twenty stairs, but I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I just don't want people to get the wrong idea. Like, yeah, hey, he does twenty stairs all day. <laughs> well, for, it's funny you said fourteen. Like when you fell on yeah. this. The no door. offense, but like the 14 stair for the kids these days is oh, it's like, like nothing. It's not yeah. nothing, but it's, you know, it is not as big. Nah. They're jumping down. They're shit. jumping He's down not. it. Yeah. But back then that was, that was nuts. Yeah. yeah. 14 yeah. stairs were huge. Now it's really big to me. <laughs> oh my God. Trust me, it's always been big even, to me. So four stair looks crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're on DECA. Yeah. And um, you turned pro on DECA. Yeah. So I went from World. They, they sold World at the time, which I didn't know about. Uh, of course, I'm just new to the whole system. And then, Wait a minute. No, you went from DECA to World. World so, to DECA. World to DECA oh, and you went back to World. Oh, you went back to World. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it started out, I was on Flow and then on like whatever, the AM team for World Industries, but they were creating DECA behind the scenes right. at the time, which right. I still didn't know about. And all of a sudden I went up there one day and uh, and Rodney and Daywan were like, hey, we're creating this new company and we want you to be on it. And, Sick. Oh, so they like, actually asked you. Yeah. And yeah. I, was like, uh, I go, I go, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't I want yeah. to follow you know, them? Follow yeah. whatever. Especially, you know, day one too. I was oh my like, God. Well, day I was like, one. They had JB, guys like JB Gillett. What did they like about my, uh, seriously, I was blown away. I still, to this day, I'm like, I mean, now that I know them, I know they appreciate all aspects of skating. Sure. But yeah, like yeah. then I was like, whatever. Like this guy likes my skating? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, but it's really cool. So I'm honored, very sure. honored. And I was like, what's it called? They're like deck. I was like, yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Wow. And then, uh, then they didn't tell me at the time, like I was going to turn pro for it. They're just like, we're going to put you on. You're going to be, the, you know, you're going to have the first ad. They, oh, uh, Wow. It was the second ad. I'm sorry. The yeah. One had the first ad. I was good. Then, yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, first ad is the AM. Oh, That's what it was. gotcha. Yeah. And then how long after did you turn pro? It was um, pretty quick yeah. because DECA didn't last that long. So it was after the Route 66 tour. Oh. I went in there and I actually had a broken wrist at the time. And uh, it was a full interview like with Rodney. And that was the first time I got really in depth with uh, Rodney. And it was like asking me all these questions naturally if i was ready like what are you going to do like hey you know you just got pretty seriously injured you think you can recover you think you know i was asking find out where your head's at it's yeah. a business yeah. yeah sure and somehow i guess i talked them into being okay with turning <laughs> I mean, uh, did you have a 40 in your uh, hand when no you're talking? no i'd see that's when i i knew in certain moments uh, even though i was still partying at the time that i, I probably shouldn't show up drunk to this interview <laughs> okay yeah. yeah you know um it's important and he knew i was drinking you know he knew mm. i was a partier but he I was I was doing enough stuff, sure, and busting my ass on my skateboard enough where I feel like they believed in me enough and thought I was going to really pull it together for mm. them. Wait, so you yeah. were am when feedback came out? Yeah. Oh wow! So that was a big thing for you too. Yeah. They're probably uh, yeah. They to were, be in that video with yeah, those yeah. guys. Oh my god! As an am too? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that was huge. Yeah. But I was being paid on World as an am, and I was. P- paid pretty good by mm. back then standards or even probably yeah, better probably than some pros. That money. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I was getting paid better than yeah. some pros are today as an amateur back then. And it's that uh, wet willy money. Yep. Yeah, so it was really good. Like I was stoked. And then all that doubled uh, when I turned pro for DECA. For DECA. Yeah, yeah, dude. And so I was doing pretty well. And that's when I was like, ha, it's on. It's on. Yeah. I made it. Like, you know, like, all right. Time to celebrate. Well, you're on a team with Day One, and yeah. I mean, that, it's huge. Marcus, and we went on yeah. a really cool trip, and Luis Cruz, Luis Cruz, JB Gillett, 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 Marcus McBride, yeah. uh, LeVar McBride was involved a little bit oh, at the yeah. time, too. So he's right. back in the mix. I love that. Yeah, LeVar, dude. Oh, so a sick. So I did a road trip, or uh, we did a black label uh, verse deca tour over in Australia for three weeks. Really? That was my first time traveling with Day One and being on the road doing a demo tour with Day One for three so sick. Wow. 
Wow. Socrates was with us. Amazing. Dude, it was like there were some not cool things that happened on that trip, but it was the most memorable still to this day, one of my most funnest trips, with the exception of a few little not so good situations few little... based around alcohol. Oh, really? Yeah. But, yeah. but Daywan skated a whole demo without bushings. It's, it's, he without, still skates without bushings. Like, with no, <laughs> like guy, actually no bushings. Because he's real picky about his bushings. Yeah. The, the, the two that he does use. <laughs> right. Like one on the bottom, one on the bottom here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't find the right bushings. So we had to go to a demo. And he literally just rode his truck with the bolt on it. With no. Washers and did shit. And I was like... <laughs> Everybody was. I mean, he was. Doing Did blunt, you see his post today blunt. of him skating on the box? He posts. That's he. He does a lot of. He's, yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's day one song. Yeah, he's, he's the best. So insane, and and what a humble, oh beautiful God. human being he yeah. is. Yeah. He's another dude that he's, when you're skating with him, he wants you to have fun as well. He makes uh, you have fun uh, the way that he skates, and he includes you into the he session. Does. And he's, he's such a just a rad dude. Yeah, he's one of the best all around human beings I've ever Absolutely. encountered and traveling with them was very special and we have some good memories from that trip and uh yeah it was just cool and seeing all those other guys skate Salman and a guy it was wow. Jason Adams and Mike Villaley um Christian's VTAC oh um, no way so we had two different vans and it was like boxing gloves like De- uh, Deca versus Black Label. Yeah. So we were supposed to show up at these demos and whoever skated the best won that demo. Wow. <laughs> that was the idea for the distribution. It sure. Was koala distribution. And so Mike V won every time. Mike V said, he even said this and he was doing his spoken word and stuff. And I have a lot of respect for Mike V, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was like, I'm going to put my name in stone. Like this. I remember Jason Adams and Solomon were sharing this with me and he was like, I'm put at this next demo. I'm gonna put my name in concrete. That's what it was. I'm putting my name here at this demo, and I guess he was real serious about his skating and yeah. what he was gonna do. Sure, and he he did. I, he got the biggest cheers and crowd pleaser guy. You know, he did the the crazy. He puts stuff. On a show, yeah, yeah, yeah he definitely he, puts on a show. He yeah. knew how to do the show. He works the crowd. <clears throat> and then uh, there was another demo when I first met Dustin, a young Dustin Dolan, and he actually blew all of us out of the water when he skated crazy. this demo. He was wow. like fourteen or fifteen at the time, wow. and just we're, I was like, who is this kid? And he's Dustin. Dustin this, Dolan. Uh, the same Dustin that he is today. He was then. Yeah. And so him and I hit it off good because I was like in the party mode. So him and I, yeah. during, before, during, and after the demo, we were like drinking together. Sure. But, sure. But he killed it at one of these demos. He was just like having fun skating with us, but him having fun skating when he was on fire and focused. And which, He's great. Yeah, it's, he's really, dude, he's your whole career, you've just been surrounded by like the best skateboarders. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Dude, so fortunate. Wow. So thankful, especially coming from Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been really, really uh, fortunate to yeah. have skateboarding you know treat me as good as it has it's in, it's incredible yeah. now what happened with deca because then you went back to world yeah so we you come, went back to world when deca was still going on it it yeah. didn't deca didn't last that long but you still bounce what, what what happened so this is what happened towards the end of the road trip uh there was a lot of partying and i believe you know, socrates was partying as well mm. i take full responsibility but him and i got in a fight oh a full fist fight Oh, seriously, fist yeah. fight. Yeah. Socrates yeah. is a very nice dude. He's very, yeah, I can't even I, picture him in right? a fist fight. Right. I think he just recently told the story on the slap thing. Okay. Um, and he was charging at me and charging at me, but I was like pounding him. for. I, I literally have zero recollection okay. of us going at it. Wow. I mean, but we fought and he, we all woke up the next day. I remember <laughs> Salmon was breaking, splitting us up. He pulled him away and then Salmon had to guard my door at the hotel we were at. Oh, God. And I was so on a good one. This is what I vaguely do remember. Salmon was standing at my door and nobody want, you don't want to mess with and Oh yeah. I big. was not drunk enough to fight Salmon, <laughs> <laughs> a guy. Right. All right. Um, and uh, anyway, I, uh, so we got broken up and it was just a nightmare. It was like the last two days or the oh last day. God. And it was just lame. And I was on this two story, uh, you know, room and Solomon's like, you can't go anywhere. You're staying in the room. You're not coming down. Cause I was just being a belligerent blacked oh, out wow. idiot. Right. So I jump off the balcony oh. and go into town to drink more. I jump, leap down to my feet. Dude, from oh my gosh. And dude. So- <laughs> Solomon. 
<laughs> I just saw someone the other day, but he, he like he remembers like trying to check on me, and I wasn't there. And he was, was like, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! He's like looking over like the curtain rail. flying in the window, <laughs> yeah. like that whole shit, right? Um, <laughs> I went and found more booze because I had no booze, and I was like, I needed my fix. You were right. and I was that desperate. And I remember that jump and I was like, Ooh, that hurt. So yeah. Like, my feet and knees. I just buckled and went to the ground. I can only imagine how it looked to the locals walking around the streets. I just it was saw some daylight. dude just follow jump the door, out of the yeah. window at the Hyatt, like whatever yeah. hotel. And I was blacked out. It was daylight still. Oh wow. Yeah. So crazy. It was so, daylight. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. So anyway, um, Socrates and I are, we're cool now. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I had, I'd come off that trip back to the DECA thing. So I'd come off that trip. Stories were already getting back about me mm. drinking and being an, uh, an idiot, you okay. know, being wasted to Rodney and to everybody. So everybody kind of started hearing these stories and they're like, dude, how much longer can we, can we deal, deal with, with this? Yeah. You know, wow. it's like, um, so I, I had multiple opportunity, Rodney, day one, everybody had their say to me to try and like say, Hey man, you might want to reel it in. Yeah. And I just yeah. But I was so locked into the drinking thing. It's not like I wanted to disregard them uh, because I didn't respect or appreciate them. Sure. Drinking was more important than what they had to say at the time. Right. And that is a form of disrespect. So I accept that. But it's like, I just didn't think anything of it. I was like, no, this is going to keep going. I'm that good, right? Right. I'm like, I got this. Yeah. I'd filmed one video part. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm done. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know what was going through my head, but it wasn't good decisions. Mm. Uh, that's for sure. I come back and I'm like, you know, day one and I had a little talk before we got back. We had a 12 hour layover in New Zealand. And he was asking me what I want. Everybody was bummed. There was these bum, like mm. Socrates had a black eye and was oh, wow. bummed. And I'm sitting over there. We had to see each other through the whole like travel. And day one's bum because I just fought his best friend right. for years. And everybody's just bummed. And day one's like, dude, what do you, what do you want to do? You know? And I'm like, I like Flame Boy and Wet Willie. As lame as that sounds. <laughs> I was like, why? I want to ride for Flame Boy and Wet Willie. Okay. <laughs> Do you think it was just the easier, like, you sw- cop knew, out kind of? Yeah, and I knew probably what was coming after. Yeah. Like, I've deep down inside, I was like, this is not good. Socrates is going home with a black eye. I have a feeling. They're going to kick me off. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And they probably did before I even thought that I even quit. Well, I was already over at World before I even... So they had sold. Oh, wait World. a minute. I was gonna, oh, yeah, I was going to say they sold. World, World was a different building now. World was in a different building um, I didn't really give day one like a, a solid answer, but he kind of knew where my head was and mm-hmm. he knew like this whole thing and me partying. And he's like, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even worried about this stuff anymore. He's like, I don't really want to stress on it. He's like, I'm just trying to do my thing. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was like, oh, all right. You know, thanks for everything, but we'll see how it goes when we get back. So it wasn't like, yeah, you're done or mm-hmm. I quit. I just kind of got left alone. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Rodney Johnson was working for world. He was the team manager. He's like, Hey dude, he's like, heard things aren't going so good over there at DECA. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, come over, talk to us at world. And I'm like, all right. So I drove over to world and Luis Cruz was working there at the time, but he was riding for DECA. Yeah. Right. Whoa, whoa. And so he called day one and then I get a call while I'm at world working out my next step without oh. even talking to anybody. day one called you day one called me and he was like, where are you at? And I'm like, uh, uh, world. What are you doing there? Well, uh, just <laughs> talking to them about getting some points. <laughs> oh my you just told God. him. Well, I just I can't remember the exact conversation. He might remember better because he's a you know he's focused. He he may not he doesn't care that much <laughs> that about that time you know. But because uh, I wasn't anything special, that's for sure. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's just how it went down. And it once again what I've learned from stuff like that is always be respectful and have a good solid conversation with people. Even it's okay to have a different feeling and a different thought and go your separate ways, but be respectful about it. You know, like man up. Yeah. Just, Hey, day one, you know, I'm not really feeling deck. I appreciate all you did for me. Rodney, you know, do you, you know, there was a better way to do it. Have, have a conversation, have a conversation. And I didn't do it that way. Right. 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 And that wasn't the only time. And that's when the, 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 the career and whatever mm-hmm. of the career that I built, which was not much of one at the time, but I felt like it was, and it just started going down. Cause, and then I'm riding for DC. I don't even talk. I'm hanging out with Danny a lot. 
at this time. I don't even talk to him or Colin. I'm partying with Kareem. Kareem's like, you want to ride for action? I'm all, yeah, why not? Oh, oh wow. wow. You were just like I that. Just, boom, boom, boom. Just on it. I mean, that was before the Australia trip. Okay. But yeah, that was like, that was the bad decisions just like without being respectful and talking to mm. people. And, and Danny, when I did that, he's dude, what are you thinking? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, oh, just Kareem. Yes. Yeah. Kareem Campbell. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, it's hard to say no to Kareem Campbell too. So, and, and he was, a, he liked to let loose. And so him and I clicked on that level. Okay. And, uh, we had a good time and partied a lot together and, and, you know, I'm, I love Kareem. He's, he's great. He is. And, uh, so I remember, uh, that, all that stuff went down and uh, I remember the, the, the action thing. I was just like a sober. I had a little stint of sobriety. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, Hey, I'm going to do this on my own. I know that things aren't going good. Oh, you already know. I know that I'm full blown alcoholic, but I'm like, I'm going to try and fix this mm-hmm. without any program or anything. So I was like, I did, I sobered up and then reality hit and I started looking at my feet <laughs> and then I started looking and I was like, I felt right more on DC. Oh, I and see then, what you're saying, right. And with all due respect to Kareem and action shoes and all that, that was just like, it wasn't me. Yeah. And that's when I started really feeling those emotions of what did I do? And and I was just like, oh my God. So I I literally called Danny. I called Colin. I called Rob Deerdick because he was a big thing on DC at the mm-hmm. time. I called Kim Block. I called Damon Way. I was begging for my spot back on dc and i wasn't even really like were you on the team i was on the am team oh yeah short time yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. and there was talks in the works which i didn't know about that danny was working on like getting me a a shoe within the next year if i had continued doing what i was doing for feedback and i didn't know this yeah so i found all this out after the fact danny told me he's like dude you blew it you blew it. You fucking blew it, dude. Oh, I'm like, yeah, oh my God. God, what did I do? So anyway, yeah, here I am, like literally just breaking down like emotional roller coaster and then calling these dudes and they're like, sorry. And then Alex Gall was a big thing at the time. They're like, dude, Alex just deered it was the harsh one. He goes, dude, Alex got your spot, dude. Sorry. You blew wow. it. Wow. Damn. Yeah, it was pretty harsh. And then that's anyway. So once again, I'm thankful for all everything that happened. I have no regrets. Yeah. Could have did things differently. But sure. Now I know. Is this a point in time where you are now starting to get sober? No, no, oh, no. Not <laughs> still party. Yeah. Cause I was like, well, something set me off. I'm like, Oh, I'm good. I can have a beer. Cause how long did your stint on world last? You went a couple more years. Or... Yeah. Yeah. So we, I, 2002 and then started getting some back covers like i got some photos mm. and was going on some world road trips that's when sheckler was on the team and i actually uh i remember kind of helping bring him on and uh introduced him to rodney like around the first time in world and all that and then uh who else uh, we had paul mack now oh wow yeah uh, carlos de andrade it was such a weird mixed team and I love Paul Mack now. I love all those dudes. It was just like Matias Ringstrom and then Mike Crump. Mm. Chad Fernandez. Chad Fernandez. Oh, yeah. And Jason Massey. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Jason yeah. Jones. And it was, a, it was a wild mix of people that they just kind of threw together. It wasn't like, hey, look, we should go as a team and get to know each other and just, hey, here's your team. Enjoy each other. You know, it's like. We didn't really, none of us knew each other. We were just kind of thrown in this thing. How and weird is were you, that? That's were you so there were, crazy. When Kyle Barrard was there? No, that's, see, that was after my demise, okay. oh. so to speak, where I was like, I was out of there and Peterson and Duffy and all those guys got on there after that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you guys really partied then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the end of the road was 2004, uh, was my last like check that came. Um, mm. And I remember Tom Curran was the team manager. Okay. I guess Rodney had moved on to Billabong and then Tom Curran came in the picture and um, I was supposed to get sober, which I did for a short stint again. Jaya Bondaroff went on a road trip with us, another rest in peace. Oh. Um, and uh, he was shooting photos. Uh, and so we went on a road trip to Arizona and I, I, I was like, you know, cringing, but I was like sober. I was like, God, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. We get to Arizona and I'm like, 
Ah, beer sounds good. I can't do this. Oh, right. Yeah, wow. it's so strong, dude. When you're an alcoholic, it's like so strong. If you if you don't have an outlet or a program or something like help, right? And like I said, I didn't know this at the time. I thought by my own willpower I could pull this off, and I tried multiple times and never could last. Oh and, wow! And so I started drinking. And I remember Sheckler, Sheckler, a 13, 14 year old Sheckler looks at me. He's like, Hey Neil. Are you supposed to be drinking? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and I'm oh like, my gosh. Yeah, I'm all right. And then I, somebody, Tom, was like, Yeah, he's just having a couple beers. And I was like, Those guys, I was supposed to really be doing good and I was supposed to produce. And that was like, Hey, they're giving me a little chance here. Were you trying to hide it at all? Were you trying yeah. to like maybe just drink a couple beers in front of people and then pound behind the scene? Like, were you. See, that's the thing. I wasn't really a hider. No. I was okay with. Hey, this is what you get. This is it. Yeah. Um, I got to get an 18 okay. pack. Are you going to drink that before noon? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I might get Damn. another one. I wow. mean, it got, it got pretty bad like towards the end, but um, I would start if I was in front of people. Yeah. I guess in a way I would hide because I'd only get a six pack. Okay. So, and then, yeah, after we'd all separate, then I would continue drinking. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. In some way, it'd probably a candy coating it a little bit. Sure. A small sure. amount of beers. Okay. okay. Uh, but especially for that. So, and then Jai and I went and shot a photo. Um, and I never made the trick. The photo came out good. <laughs> Fuck it, run it. And a lot of skaters have done that, by the yeah. way. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of photographers done that. Yeah, the photo, yeah. photo came out great. But yeah, but, I'll go back and get it. I promise. Yeah. Well, it, but that's it. Just wasn't the case. I just didn't produce. And, and mm. Jaya went back and told him I was drinking, and mm. and uh, that was it. And and I I looked in the mail and I was like, hey, Tom, where's my? Chair? He's like, dude, I I tried to tell you. And I was like, no, you didn't. So I, Rodney tried to tell me like a couple years before, you know, it's like people tried to tell me, but I wasn't hearing it yeah. until it was time to not see the check in the mail when I had rent to pay. Sure. And I was scared shitless. And I, I was bet. Like, oh God, what am I going to do? What did so you do? I just started drinking heavier. Oh, wow. Gosh. I, it got even worse. Danny actually uh, let me move into the warehouse at the DC ramp. Oh, you were like really? living under the ramp. I was living under the ramp. Wow. With my cats. You had cats. Yeah. My girlfriend at the time, she was awesome. She worked at World. I met her there. We were like a three and a half, four year relationship, but she, she couldn't handle it anymore. She left. The career's gone. She left. And then friends were like, I can't deal with you. And then Danny was like, stepped up. He's like, hey, you can move into the park, build a little house behind the ramp as long as you're getting on your feet. Right. And I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. You know, I'm like, so just demoralized like just yeah well you're living under you're living under a ramp now yeah under a vert ramp that they come and skate at nine in the morning when colin was focused (laughs) i'm like still partying trying to sleep in and like i know what are the cats Uh, doing they're probably freaking freaking out out. poor cats (laughs) when did when does it click when do you like turn the page dude so i'm supposed to be getting my shit together and then uh i uh chris miller gets me uh a job because he knew he, he would come over and skate the ramp and he was working for X games and it was 2004 X games. It's the first year that they gone live. The first year that the mega ramp was there, right? Okay. It was outdoors. This um, is a televised. Yeah. A televised event. He was like, Hey, would you be interested in doing like a uh, sideline reporting? You know, you just, you're talking to your people that, you know, after they get through skating. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, dude, pay is pretty good. And I'm off. Yeah, let's do this. Perfect. All the while, Chris, not knowing, how you know sucked into alcoholism i was he was just being nice guy like he is yeah and uh so i go up there and uh i'm so nervous and scared i've never done this job i didn't realize so much went into it like being in front of the cameras i mean they're putting makeup on me and all this and you got a thing in your ear probably yeah so check this out so i go up there and then I, i go back down and i decide so i'm skating vert at the time a little bit mm-hmm. just because it's there it's my it's my front it's my right? front yard yeah. right it's your I, living room yeah so I, I did one day up there and then i come back down and i'm skating vert and i try a uh, smith grin on the vert and i slip and just smash my face right here oh dude lip like tooth through the lip like uh, gnarly and uh so I busted my face, and I'm supposed to be on camera for the X Games. Oh, China Waver. Oh, that's it's, amazing. So I go up there, and they look at me, all the pr- production people, and they're just like, 
oh god because i'd already signed the papers like to work and i was like i can you know they're like well we're well, gonna have to put on some makeup and then maybe mm. we're, we're not gonna put you on camera but the, oh, people will hear you just voice. be a hand coming with a microphone i'm like god figures oh my god so yeah it's full like stitches in the lip trying to do <laughs> sideline reporting and then all the while i'm super nervous and i don't know what i'm doing with that job and <laughs> I'm, so i go to the store and i'm drinking to calm the nerves as i think they're calming the nerves and here i am drinking like during I'm supposed to be working during a televised yeah. <laughs> event. Yeah. You got a busted, busted lip. Oh busted my lip. God. So bad. So during this time is, uh, this is when things started changing is oh, okay. I, I get a, I get a, a really ended up being a cool phone call. But at the time I was like, Holy shit. My friend from Jacksonville, Florida called me and, and said, uh, that Gretchen, a girl I dated was looking for me because there was a, a child involved and it's, now my 24 year old daughter lauren whoa wow and she was eight at the time and when i finally um yeah i got that call i was walking around downtown just out of my mind so i was on top of being really uncomfortable that really made me uncomfortable and i was like oh god uh like part of me was like, uh, I, just well, it's not even a baby. Emotions. It's a child. Yeah. Yes. So it's a I was child. mixed emotions, uh, a ton of them. So I'm like, all right, so I got to make this happen. So I, f I try and finish the job. And they asked, they knew I probably smelled like booze. And they asked me if I wanted to do the job. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And it was the worst experience ever because oh, my no. head wasn't focused. Right. right? Yeah. And so I'm like, a deer in headlights there. I'm trying to talk to Danny and Bucky after Bucky just got through doing a winning run. I'm like, huh? How did it feel? And they're like, you can't say that. And my earplug, don't say, ask how it feels. And I'm all, ah, <laughs> I was so freaked out by this. Like, why wouldn't they want to? Uh, it's weird. It, but there were certain things I couldn't say. I couldn't do. I couldn't act. Huh. They, they dressed me. They put on makeup uh, for obvious reasons. Sure, sure. My lip. But it was just a, it, it could have been a better experience if my head was in the right place. Right. I made it a real horrible experience by it being sure you yeah know, drinking wow. so i was like all right i gotta figure this out and go back to florida and 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 deal with this so i uh i packed up my cats <laughs> i was live uh i had moved into out of the ramp no 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 i was still living at the ramp sorry okay still living at the ramp but i was like i'm gonna sober up this is after i met my daughter so okay before i go back to florida i go back to the ramp Sorry. Uh -huh. Like, all right. I was getting confused. So I'm like, I'm driving back to Florida. I had a Volvo at the time and I'm packing up my cats and I, uh, I took some of the money I, I just made at the X games and, uh, I had one of my mom's friends, which I moved out to California in 2001 when I was doing well hmm. and she lives here now and she's sober. Amazing. So that's a cool part yeah. of the story. Um, Anyway, my mom's friend like loaned me money and I just like went back and I was drinking the whole to drive. I drove Ooh. back to Florida drunk to go meet my daughter. Wow. Her yeah. Alcohol is really consuming. I, I'm a daily drinker at this point from morning until night. Wow. And there's no stopping it. There's no, I couldn't wake up thinking any differently. It's like to feel good. I had to drink. Sure. There was no way around it. I was like, man, this is how I feel normal. I yeah. have to have it. Crazy. And so, yeah, I drove back to Florida and, and met mom, met daughter. And, well, re-met mom again. Yeah. And, um, and she was a little skeptical and wanted to see where I was at. And, you know, I sobered up just enough to, like, try and be focused. But I was, like, shaky. Mm. And I was scared. And I was like, man, and this beautiful little girl. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is awesome. And so I started feeling these emotions and this connection. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I'm like, all right. I guess, you know, I got to start living life. I got to like really probably get my shit together. So while I was there, I was still drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't click right away. Okay. But I knew something, some started brewing in me like, okay, things probably should change, but I'm not ready. Right. And so I would pick her up, hung over and take her to get to know her. We'd go to the movie theater. I just was like trudging through it. Terrible, terrible. And and uh, I started just was like, I, I can't be in Florida. I just can't do this. And uh, I remember I had 150 bucks in my pocket. And I woke up one morning. This was at the friend that called me. Oh, yeah. I was staying at his house. Bo, Bo Crum is his name. Mm -hmm. um, still a really close friend today. And uh, I woke up with 150 bucks and I just looked at him. I'm like, and I'm super hungover. I'm like, I'm driving back to California. He's like, dude, what do you mean? I go, I got to go. I got to get back. And he's like, 
oh, do you have money? And I go, I got 150 bucks. He goes, that's not going to make it. And I go, I got wheels. <laughs> like <laughs> what? I had some wheels that somebody sent me. I can't even remember. Who was, <laughs> like it was okay with sending me stuff. Back sell, then. sell some wheels for 10 bucks. Yeah. Bit. Like yeah. I'll just, uh, hopefully stop at a skate shop. And I just got up and I told her mom, I was like, I got to go back to California and figure out my life and get a job and hopefully help. You know, right. So I just got up and left on 150 bucks. Dang. <laughs> Did you make it? Picked up. Yeah. So sh- struggling, but I picked up a hitchhiker. Oh, okay. Uh, with had, your cats? No, I left my cats in Florida. Okay. That's how good of a dude I was. I left them with my aunt. Fortunately, I did leave leave uh, the cats with a really good person, my aunt Donna, and I'm thankful for her. She oh, actually good. she helped me big time, and uh, she ended up eventually helping me get my cats back. Oh, nice. Months later, yeah. Where was the hitchhiker going? To Texas or something, and I picked him up. He had some weed, which I was really excited about. Okay. <laughs> he some weed, and he had gas money. Oh, perfect. Yes, so he didn't help. have much, but I was yeah. like, all right, I'll take you as far as I can take you. Where he Because he was trying to go to Dallas. I was like, well, I'm not going to Dallas, but you can get out of here and then hitchhike your way to Dallas, and I'm just going to keep going straight. Oh, uh, yeah. I stop, at the, I stop at skate shop or somewhere in Arizona, and I'm like, I had, oh, Childers. Chill, I got a flat tire in Iran, Texas. Iran, Texas. I R A. Never even heard of it. I know. Yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere. So I get a flat tire on the 10. And I'm fine. Uh, someone tells me the closest town is uh, 20 miles that way, inland, or whatever it was. And that was Iran, Texas. And there was a little tire shop there. So I drove with a flat tire oh on the rim. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, driving was, probably dude. like ten miles, like five miles an hour. Yeah, not even. Yeah, crazy. It was struggling, me. dude. Yeah. yeah, it was a struggle. And then I called Brian Childers and uh, collect. <laughs> okay, it didn't wow. even have a quarter. And he, no. and he, uh, he answered, and he, uh, he sent me, he Western Union me some money. No and way. And helped me get back some of the way. So I stopped in Arizona. He got me to Arizona. He wasn't happy about it. Yo, okay. Right. But he did help me. And uh, I get to Arizona and I knew a couple people there, Aaron uh, Forgen, and he knew the skate shop. So I went in there and sold some wheels at the skate shop, I think. And then uh, maybe it was, uh, what, what's that shop called? Why am I spacing? Cowtown? Yeah, Cowtown. Cowtown, yeah. It could have been, I think it might have been Cowtown oh, when wow. we first like, started. Oh, I see. Anyway, so uh, that got me back the rest of the way, and uh, and I ran out of gas going into San Diego, and here I am panhandling on the side of the road for gas. To get home, you must be thinking right now, like crazy journey. I'm, I, I'm in a bad place. This is I'm, I'm standing on the corner right Dude. now, panhandling, yeah, asking for people for money to help me with gas so I can get the last forty miles home. Oh, that was gnarly. What what year was this, by the way? This again? was two thousand four, two thousand five, going into that. I mean, uh, literally the last part of my twenties. I was like twenty seven at the time. Mm. And I, I was, it was all literally a pretty, almost a blackout. I have very vague memories. Wow. And uh, yeah, and it didn't get any better after that. Oh, yeah, really? I knew I had a big problem. I knew something was wrong. And I was like, what happened? Where did my career, like what, what, how did all this go down? I was so devastated, but I didn't know how to get away from alcohol. Yeah. That was the, the sickest part of it where I was like, I knew what the problem was and just could not couldn't kick it. it. How long after then did you finally get help? I assume you reached out to somebody or, or you got in the AA program or, or, you know, to help you. Yeah. So I get back, I drive, I like I get back and then, uh, I get a job, um, being a taxi driver. So oh, like, that's a good job when you're yeah. drinking every all day. Crazy. Right. So I had a clean driving record somehow. And so they hired me. I went in there after drinking two, um, uh, two twenty-four ounce beers, <laughs> and went and got the job, got the keys to a, a yellow cab taxi in Oceanside. They gave you the key. You, wow. you, they gave me the keys to a taxi. And Insane. what did you? What they say? Just go out and pick people up. Yeah, I mean there was a process, but I was yeah. like, I, I got the keys and I was buzzed <clears throat> somehow. I had a clean driving record. That's all they worry about. And then you, you, so you lease the car. And so I the, see. So I was like they. They're like, hey, if we're going to get our money, that's all they care about. Okay, okay, wow. So you had to make a certain amount of money, uh, uh, you know, every week to pay for the lease on the car, the weekly lease, bi-weekly lease, monthly lease. So it was like, okay. you had to pay like every week. And so I did, yeah, I had to hustle. So I'm hustling, wasted. I'd like 
not caring that I need to keep people safe, just doing drinking with my clients, going and parking the taxi up the hill, walking back down to the bar, partying with my clients, going to get the taxi, picking them up, taking them home, partying oh. at their house after. Gnarly shit, just like wow. so lame. And uh, sniffing coke with them, doing this, getting back in the taxi, checking to see if I got any pickups, going picking up. Dude. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's it had crazy. me. I was so locked in. And, and like I said, that's something I'm not even – close to being proud of sure but it was a part of that was a part of the way i was living and that's how i was making money and i would do 18 hour shifts but i would be on drugs and drinking the whole time oh my god you know i'm sure some people knew and then some people were dude you'd be surprised people just girls offering themselves but offering drugs alcohol like i mean it was nuts it's almost like a party in your cab it was it was for seven months i did that for seven months and uh sorry my ear keeps getting a little oh, sweaty good, and uncomfortable bro. but uh oh my god yeah so i i'm lucky i, I didn't kill anybody thankfully yeah and uh nothing super bad came out of that it was just mm. very uh very selfish irresponsible yeah, yeah a there's, lot of a, a lot of stuff a, a lot of big no-nos there yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> yeah so uh that I had to get out of that and then i was uh, living with my uh hey, do you uh I moved out of the ramp at some point here. You guys know Taylor Smith? Remember uh, yeah. Spliff? Yeah, T-Spliff. T-Spliff. Yeah. So when I moved out of the ramp, I was when this when I came back after the daughter thing, and I was yep. like, I'm going to sober up. I'm going to get my shit together. It's before the taxi situation. Okay. Ernie, his dad, was like, you can move in with us. Taylor was 10 at the time. And I'm like, cool. Wow. So he gave me a date to move in. I was on the right track. I'm like feeling good. I'm focused. I'm like, all right, I'm about to ho- live a whole new life because I got this daughter now and I'm going to do this. Uh, two days before I was supposed to move in with Ernie, uh, Ernie, a beer sounded good again. So I was like, dude, because I'm doing well now. Like I'm like, I'm feeling good. So I'm like, I can handle a beer. Right. So I'm going to drink. And I remember Ernie coming in. And he was like. Yeah, man, I'm stoked you're moving in. You know, it'd be good for my kid to be around you and skate with you and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, that would be, that's going to be cool, right? And uh, and I had a beer in my hand and he's like, uh, he's like, but you weren't drinking, right? And I'm like, yeah, I wasn't, but I'm good. I was like, dude, don't worry. When I come to your house, I'm going to be fine. I was like, I'm not going to drink a lot. I'm just going to have a couple beers here and there because that's what the alcoholic mind says. Yeah. You know, okay. so I move in and, um, yeah, dude, and just I'm. This is when I started sneaking beers because I was worried about getting kicked out. Oh, and he, so stupid. I, I'm hiding them in the recycle bin and trying to hide them underneath paper. And you know, he eventually, obviously, saw them and he could smell it. And I'm smoking yeah. weed in the backyard, and Taylor's around, and he can smell it, and all this stuff. And it's just just being a terrible dude right a wow. terrible example yeah so i'm doing these odd jobs with brent cromuller building ramps oh. and jeff king gave me some work building some ramps and um that's how i'm making money and how i'm getting by and paying ernie rent mm-hmm. and uh and uh yeah and then that's when ernie had to kick me out you know i wasn't doing that well right he was like he didn't want me around taylor anymore well yeah i mean 10 year old kid smoking weed drinking beers yeah. drunk yeah. yeah yeah bad situation bad and my cats were there and your cats. Yeah, yeah. Like, he took us in, and he was really cool about it. And, wow. uh, and I blew that. So it was like all these little, like, here, here's a little opportunity. Here, here, here. You know, and just, like, piss, drink it, you know? Down the drain. Yeah, pissing. Pissing wow. on it. Like, oh, cool, thank you. Let me piss on this. <laughs> you know? So uh, that's when I was like, my mom lived in a studio. She had a her landlord. Not even her. She hit, Her landlady had a garage. That's when I'm like, oh, I'm going to move to the big time. I'm going to move into the garage. Okay. At my mom's studio that she had nothing to do with, but the landlady was nice enough to let me move in. My mom at the time was full-blown in alcoholism. Okay. So we were feeding off of each other shit. Wow. And the landlady, full-blown alcoholism. So we were all like this big circle of just... Partiers. Just depressed, oh miserable partiers, just living shitty. Oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, did the garage thing. That's when the taxi job popped up. Okay. I did that, and that's where I was living. I'd go back to no bathroom. I was shitting and pissing in the cooler. Then cleaning, what? It, cleaning it out every couple of days. It was pretty it was mis- miserable. Good God. Dude, what? Let's yeah, see. miserable. I've never heard anyone even wow. doing that before. Well, it's because, like, I couldn't. My mom would lock the doors on me because, I, like, she didn't want me coming in at 3 in the morning all coked up oh, and wow. wasted. 
the landlady didn't want me coming in after the taxi shift being all like out of my mind. And you know, that's, that's how nobody wanted to deal with me. <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to deal with me. I was so over it. Uh, so that's why the cooler, when I, I was desperate, desperate situations, when <laughs> I would start feeling that I'm like, I have nowhere else to go. Yeah. Yeah. That was my bathroom. Oh my goodness. No, it was horrible because there were neighbors and I wasn't supposed to be seen by the neighbors. It was oh, just it was the a, whole thing. It was bad. Yeah. Bad. And, uh, so yeah, I did the taxi thing seven months, quit mm-hmm. that. Uh, another the guy that believed in me was like, Hey, if you have a clean driver here, you come get a job being a street sweeper. So here I am with all these driving jobs. What? So I became a street sweeper for about three weeks and guess where they sent me? To all of the famous skate spots at SDSU. That's oh. where I was cleaning the streets. So it was what? like the universe just going, look, look what you did. You know, it's like I'm looking at all the spots people skated, all yeah. these famous ledges and rails. And I'm like street sweeping at like two, three in the morning drinking. You were drinking while you were street sweeping? Yeah, are right? you surprised now? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. That surprises you? I know, like after the tax thing. <laughs> But dude, yeah. shitting in a bucket, bro. like just never learning is no, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was like, I was just fucking running myself into a wall over and over and over again. Like I just, that's how it had me. It, yeah. It was fucking, it had me. I couldn't stop, dude. That's, wow. that's when the misery, the depression, all of it just started mm. consuming me. And, uh, yeah, I took, uh, I took another shot at, uh, going back to Florida. I was like, all right, the street sweeping thing's not going to work out. And that's when my mom's friend loaned me four grand. Whoa. Damn. Or something. Yeah. And I was like, I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drive back to Florida now and go be a dad. And now I'm going to go live in Florida and do construction during the summer okay. and be a dad to my daughter new you know newly found daughter and and i'm just gonna be amazing (laughs) i'm gonna live with my friend Bo, which he's always been just very kind and letting me back in his house even no matter what the state of mind and yeah and so i drove back and uh my car blew up (laughs) on the way (laughs) (laughs) you had your cats with you i assume (laughs) no the cats were still in florida oh they were still the first time the first okay with my aunt donna so it was just me this time driving wasted back to florida with somebody else's money oh what do you do every time i think it's rock bottom Uh -uh. no uh you just keep going more bro imagine living it dude yeah yeah it's it's sad sad time what did you do now (laughs) car blows up (laughs) midway my friend james drove out to i was i was in uh somewhere outside of tallahassee or yeah pensacola like somewhere outside of you're close to florida i'm in florida at this time like but barely in there gotcha and jacksonville is about a four hour drive away that's a big solid for a friend to do yeah, drive absolutely. four hours yeah yeah so uh he not only drove to come get me he drove with a trailer to carry my car back for me to hopefully get it fixed dude i don't uh, even uh, know anybody with a trailer dude, i know that's weird I'll, yeah it's florida true yeah, that's a good point <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm like who would i call if i had to call somebody with a trailer i don't know Raj hit the nail on the head <laughs> <laughs> half the population in florida has trailers yeah <laughs> ironic so he picked you yeah. up put the, the car on the back of the yep. trailer and then fed oh. me i had no money we took like four still, grand. What happened? I partied it. Done. Dude. I remember meeting at in Arizona. On the way from California to Florida. Because <laughs> I stopped in Arizona. I Dude. stopped in Arizona and partied with Aaron. And then we, t- oh, make a wish was happening. That's okay. what it was. So there was, I met some guys in Arizona, which Aaron Forgen was one of my friends still today, but I had him hop in the car with me. And then my friends from Florida were going to meet at make a wish in Houston at Southside Skate Park. Yeah, yeah. And so we had Sean Peter was shooting photos so okay. i actually got some stuff done on the oh, road yeah. wasted perfect well but i got some stuff done again i was like oh yeah this pro thing's really going good i'm writing a mystery board okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's really what it was i remember who was i think it was chad foreman was nice enough i think to give me okay. a couple of boards or maybe it was Lindsay robertson oh wow yeah. oh. anyway uh so yeah so that was happening okay yeah, and that's where money got spent and used, and yeah, because I was living the dream again. I mean, that's a big payout. It's a yeah. four grand. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't need to save it. I mean, I'm going get back to, to back? be a dad. What happened when you get to Florida yeah. now? So anyway, yeah, I get. So my friend comes to pick me up. 
and I have zero money and he's feeding me and he's just like, so what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you know, he's trying to be a friend, but he's also trying to be like, what? Get look, your shit together. Yeah. Look at your life. Yeah. <laughs> You're blowing it. <laughs> and uh, so we're driving and we have a long talk. Spent $4,000 within 3000 yeah. miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're we're driving back and and uh, he's having the the talk with sure. me and just asking and then I'm so invested into this drinking thing. I ask him to buy me beer and he does. I'm so sick, like shaking and sick, and he's like, he was more worried for my health because I was that bad that he didn't want me to collapse. You could die. Yeah, yeah you could die. Yeah, that's weirdly enough. I think. But that's I was so- like, dude, I I, I, got, I gotta have a beer. I can't yeah. fucking like do this. Wow. And so he got me beers and he's like, so res- he's a responsible guy. Then he's even more responsible now. He's like sells life insurance. Mm. Really good dude. And, and he didn't want alcohol in his car, but he was like, dude, you look like you're pretty fucked. So I'm going to get you. Wow. Yeah. So he got me some beer to be okay on the drive. And yeah, that just continued. I worked with Buck Smith building houses for a little bit and, we did some stuff with the daughter and, and uh, my friend's son at the time, Everett, and uh, we went on like a camping trip. Hmm. Yeah, and this is where it it started hitting my friend James that picked me up. We mm-hmm. went on this camping trip, and he's like, "Hey, do you mind driving?" And I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." And we it's his kid and Lauren, my daughter. Uh huh. And uh, and he he comes back around in the trunk. I'm loading up the coolers, and I'm pounding two beers before I get behind the wheel with our kids yeah. to drive back home. So I needed to feel okay. Wow. Yeah. And he looks at me and he goes, you're really taking this alcohol thing seriously, aren't you? And he, and he was like dead serious. I'll never forget him saying that. And I was like, what does that mean? He's like, well, you're pretty, looks like you're pretty serious about it because you're drinking and you're about to drive us back to home. Right. Yeah. And he didn't. Let me drive. Right, right, of course. You know, yeah. But yeah, he put me in check real quick and I just got silent and it gave me a lot to think about and where we're riding back. So, wow. You know, it's the incomprehensible demoralization is what I've started feeling more and more and more all the time. And I was just like, what, you know, where did all this skate stuff go? What happened? Yeah. I just ask myself that all the time. Yeah. What happened? While you're drinking. Yeah. 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 So, the answer's in sickness. your hand. Yes. Yeah. And there's the sickness. So, yeah. Um, once again, this is where my aunt Donna comes in and helps me. I was like, she flies me and my cats back to California. Oh, she wow. knew like, I, I just couldn't, couldn't hang. And, uh, she was like, I'll help you get back to California so you can go do whatever you got to do. And, uh, yeah, went back and, and, uh, continued the mission. And, uh, it was, I don't know, give or take, a year almost, six months to a year, mm-hmm. um, is when I, I finally, here comes the sobriety part where I was like, something came over me and I was like, I can't live like this anymore. And I was wasted at the time. And I asked my friend Mike that I was partying with. He, he's a, a guy that had his shit together. He, he didn't skate much. He's, he could skate a little, but he like, we played golf together. He let John Holland live with him. Shanny. Oh, Shanny. Yeah. Shanny lived with him at the time. So I'd always, I was always at their house and they got sick of seeing me show up with 18 packs on a Tuesday while they're like going off to work and stuff. And they're starting to get annoyed. And so anyway, my friend Mike and I were partying and I finally asked for help. Never asked for help. Never wanted to. Cause I was like, I got this. Yeah, of course. And every time I got it, is when I get in trouble. That's what I, that was the lesson I learned. I was like, right. I can never think that I got this. It's got to be uh, help. I need help through this, and and still today, it's like I can't do this alone. You know. So, right. What did your buddy say when you? Uh... So I was like, hey, I can't live like this. I'm willing to go to rehab. I'm like, I'm I'm crying at this point. I'm right. breaking down. I'm like real emotional mess and just done. And I could tell like everybody's getting fed up. Nobody would answer my calls. Nobody wanted to be around mm. me and. And so I'm devastated crying. And he was like, well, what do you want me to do? I was like, I just, I just need help. I, pl- I don't care what it is. Please, please help me. Wow. And he didn't know. He was kind of like out of his, out of it at the time anyway. And then when we sobered up or so I picked a date, I go May 1st. And I was, it was my birthday at the time, which is April 10th. Mm. Remember that Kelly. April. Yeah. Oh, April so 10th. put it in my the calendar. Yeah, yeah. Calendar. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was like that. That's how I was partying, letting loose for my birthday, and then uh, I picked May first for some reason. Huh? And this was two thousand seven, and uh, in between this time, uh, before that, that, that's 
Troy gave me a job at KO. Oh, yeah. That's why I was waiting. I forgot that little part where I started trying to get back into skating. Yeah, I remember that. And I was doing sales at KO, but I was still drinking and partying. And, um. and then I remember going off one weekend. I took a bunch of ecstasy, and I didn't show up for two days without calling. And Troy was like, darn it, I'm sorry. I can't have you work wow. here anymore. That was like, so it was another opportunity, just blowing, blowing, yeah. blowing. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's when I, all right, the, the walls came crashing and I asked mm. for help. And and I set May 1st and uh, he held me accountable every day. He texted me. He's like, May 1st is the day. And so I continued drinking. Yeah. And then I knew that day was coming, but I felt in my heart. I was like, that's the day. That's when I'm going to be done. It's weird. Usually p- people don't pick their sobriety day like that. Yeah. Usually it's some crazy event that okay. happens and then the next day they're like you know yeah back in, yeah they're or in they ended up in or, yeah. yeah rehab or jail and i just like i was like i'm gonna do this and i was like i just feel it i already know so you know those couple weeks go by and uh sure enough uh the last night i was like i got an 18 pack i got a little bindle of coke and i got a sack of weed and i was like this is my last shit and it was just like sat there alone in a house that i just recently moved in from working at KO because people started were like, Hey, maybe he's on the right track, but right, I, right. I really wasn't. And, uh, yeah. So I, uh, um, I was like, this is it. And so that was it. And that was the last drink and drug that I had in May, May, uh, May 1st, 2007. 2007. So yeah, once again, I was going to do it on my own, but I realized I was like five days in, I ran into Tommy Cadell and something about Tommy Cadell. Cause we used to party together. Something was different about him. He had wide eyes and he was like focused and he looked good. His skin looked good. And I was like, what the hell has he been doing? I was like, not drinking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, but at the time I didn't know, I was just new, like barely like getting by and right. shaking it out. And I was like bummed and we just ran into each other and he was like, Hey, what are you up to? I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to stay on track. I was like, you know, I told him a little bit of what's going on. I'm like, I'm five days sober. And he's like, well, what are you doing to stay sober? And I'm all not, man. I'm just like, just winging it. And he's all dude. I go. And he told me, he's like, yeah, I've been sober like in a year and a half, man. My life's like really good right now. And he's like, I'm doing this program. And I was like, what is it? And he's like, AA hey, hey. is like, you want to check it out? I'll take you. Took me to my first meeting, got me a big book. And I've been like, involved ever since been sober ever since <laughs> that's it that's incredible and the wow. only uh times i've had drugs was doctor prescribed for two surgeries i've had since i've been oh. sober um and i try like literally get off pain pills within two days and i'm done i just do ibuprofen try to do yeah 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 so. Wow. But that's the only drugs that have been in my system. Sure. That's um, amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, that's bro. awesome. Yeah, Congrats. it's great. Thank you. And you still go to this day? Yes. I don't I'm not frequent, but I do. I'm involved still and I still yeah. check in and I'll still I take tokens if I'm in a place where I'm like my sobriety date falls in that place like I took a 8-year token in China. No way. That's yeah, sick. Yeah. I took um was a 10 year token in Australia. Cause if, if it falls on the day of your sobri- May 1st. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm somewhere May 1st, so I'll gotta, try and go to a meeting in another country. That, that's, too. You so got a like, token in China. Yeah. It was crazy. And I was, there was not one Chinese person in the meeting. No it way. Was like all foreigners. Yeah. Really? Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. In this crazy building. Like it was wild. When well, how, it's hard to find too. Yeah. I can bet. I bet. How did you find it? <laughs> yeah, just was, uh, AA, believe it or not, you can like it's worldwide. Looking for a bunch of people is. smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. I remember. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hovering around the coffee like a keg. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, you want another cup? Yeah. I trip out. I watched that story about how AA was started. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Bill, uh, Bill and Bob. Yeah, yeah, the whole story is insane. Yeah. Bill W. Yeah. yeah, friend of Bill W. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of a mellow way to say, "Oh, you're a friend right, of right, Bill's. right." You know, because you can kind of tell when you start talking to somebody. You know, if they're in the yeah. program. Yeah. When did you actually from from May first? When did you actually start feeling normal and you could do this and you could you you could see the light ahead of you? So I started getting happy really quickly because I knew I was done. I knew in my heart, like from that night, I just knew I was done. So I started f- more so than other people mm. feel. It takes a while for some people like to start feeling good and get through the, the detox. Yeah, but and the... I just was so excited to ha- to be done. I just felt, I just knew it. And I was so excited that I was like liberated and I was happy pretty quick. And I remember people in AA were like, how long do you get sober? And I'm all... Uh, two weeks and they're like 
you look too happy to have two weeks. Are you sure? Like you must have not have had that hard of a road. And I'm like, no, I'm just super stoked to live a new life. You know? Wow. Yeah. You were putting yourself through hell. Oh, oh yeah. my God. And that's why I was like, yeah. I just knew and, and it felt so good. And yeah. so I got it pretty quick. Cause I did whatever I was told. And that's part of doing the, the work too. Is like mm. whenever somebody's like, get a commitment, do this, clean the coffee machine. Uh, you want to lead, you want to share, you want to do this. All I did was just go, okay, okay. Okay, because I never did that before. I wanted to do it my way. Well, as a skater, yeah, and living your whole life without people telling you what to do, yeah, you it's hard to take direction sometimes. It's hard being told what to do. Yeah, big time. And so that's what I learned, like just to try somebody else's way for once, right? And it worked, and it still works today. I just try to stay out of my own way. So I to love speak. that, bro. And I still have my moments. I mean, I'm I'm still we're all <laughs> we're all human. Progress, but we're yeah. all human. Yeah, but yeah. listen, how many years now? Coming up on thirteen. Thirteen yes. years. Twelve and a half. So. And let me tell you something. Now, since you got sober, I would imagine pretty soon after, good things started happening to you again. Because I mean, not. I mean, you started like a skateboard academy. You start. I mean, that was a little later, yeah. right? But um, but uh, once you're sober, I feel like you could clearly see the world and see the opportunities that Absolutely. that presented that get presented to you yeah and and make way better decisions <laughs> and, ca- and calculations you would have stayed on deca if uh, it was a, i would have been a pro for almost probably right <laughs> now because <still. laughs> that's what deca turned into right and most important you those relationships with your family and friends yeah all that stuff. Oh, now, you got to mend now yeah. you're on the mend exactly and that's what the program helps with and, and making things right with people that you had wrong and i it was everybody i had to, to go through this process with Mm. from all the people I've t- talked about here. Yeah. And uh and it's not it's not easy work. I mean, going and making things right with places in Florida that I did beer runs at to that level and I did. You went back and said, uh, "Hey, I stole beer from you." Yeah, like 10 years ago or something what? like that. Like, but I want to pay for it now. Wow. Really? What'd they say? They probably didn't, the same people probably didn't even no, work there. No, he was like it's different management. I can't take your money for that. <laughs> So what I got told by, I called my sponsor. I was like, Hey, they're not taking my money. I went out of my way. I drove down to Gainesville. This was in Gainesville. I did a couple beer runs at a couple different stores. And so I showed up to pay them back and they're like, it's under different management. So you're going to have to mail in the money or mail it to this person. So, and so, so they gave me direction. Oh, wow. wow. So I called my sponsor and he said, you know what, in these situations, cause you're, you're making the effort, go find a charity of your choice and oh, you perfect. just give the money to charity, like a, uh, you know, the people ring the bell, the Salvation Army. Salvation Army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I went and spread it out. I went to like a couple of different Salvation Armies and dropped the money in there. Amazing. So wow. it was like, and now I just make living amends to people that may not be around anymore that I wasn't able to make things right with or places mm-hmm. or things. Okay. So I do as much as I can to give freely of myself in any situation that I can. If I get asked to do something that has to do with giving back, I just don't say no. Right. You know, it's amazing. And, and I offered that freely anyway but if there's any way i can make it up to yeah because i don't think i'll ever make it up but i feel like that's a whole part of the growth and feeling good too is yeah. giving back seriously and yeah and that's where you know the whole skate uh program kind of started uh it, it actually spanned. I uh, got a job doing pest control. I found out mm. I didn't like killing things through that when i first sobered up okay so my first year of sobriety was doing pest control and i was like I broke down, sounds funny, but I broke down crying one day when a, a rat ran up under my feet and was like convulsing. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Cause and you I, did that. I was, I was a part of that. Yeah. Whether it was my poison or somebody else. Sure. I, you, geez. you killed the rat. I was so bummed. Yeah. yeah. And I already didn't like killing spiders. And to this day, dude, I don't kill anything. I put, I, I let spiders walk on me. I put them out of the house. I save everything that I can. If I get invaded with ants, I have to go there. I was going to say, yeah. ants, ants are, but I still, when we're outside, I even tell my, my new, newest daughter now, uh huh. I tell her, watch out for the ants to step over them. Oh, yeah. To that extent. Oh, but if they're in the house and they're invading, I got to go It's there. tough because it can become a very big problem. Yeah. 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 So that was something I learned about myself through that process. So that job was cool. And then uh, that's when I was like, I want to get back into skating. And I was on the right track. So I was like, I feel like people could, now that I got a year of sobriety under my belt, people know that I'm serious about it. Not like, oh, cool. He's got a couple weeks or months again. Right. Yeah. We've already given this guy a chance. Exactly. And, yeah. So I kind of built up a little... Uh, you know, I guess, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, some just 
like credit credit yeah so yeah <laughs> I built up a little like sobriety credit sure and so i was like i called chad foreman uh at black box uh was when black box was doing really well mm -hmm. and was big and and they were close to me and uh yeah I, um i started i found a place to live with a couple people that work there and i was still doing the pest control thing but uh i knew that they worked there i was like hey i wonder if i hit up chad he's like dude hit up chad see if you can get a job so i knew chad and uh, I hit him up and he's like, yeah, come in, fill out an app. And, you know, I got a job there packing boxes. And okay. I took a pay cut to get around skateboarding again, where my heart was. Oh, Amazing. Wow. So That's I cool. was making like $14 an hour doing the pest control. And then I went to Black Box to make eight bucks an hour. Wow. Packing boxes with kids that used to ride my pro bono. Oh, How crazy. Humbling. Yeah. yeah. And I that was a part of like the humility part of the program too is like, kind of letting me know like hey you know like this is it's it, like i said i was like embarrassed and ashamed but at the same time i needed to hear that and yeah. go through that and, sure dude i remember you doing this or the slam and yeah, like, yeah, ah. yeah and i'm like cool you know i'm like 31 and these guys are 20 and they you know and i'm i'm like i said i'm feeling embarrassed and kind of ashamed but it was part of my humility yeah. that I needed an ego crusher. Yeah. Sure. A big one. Yeah. Because I thought I had this shit <laughs> when I was drinking. Right. Yeah. Right. So that, that's what that job did. And then I got to uh, a few months in, that's where the, the whole, I started asking the kids around there. I go, Hey, escape lessons, a thing. Cause I, I worked at a couple skate camps, uh, during the platinum days. I did YMCA skate camp. Oh, sure, and that's sure. where I met Sheckler actually a little okay. Sheckler and, Helped him learn how to kickflip. I saw his first kickflip. But it's all to you. It's all accredited to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take There's credit for his kickflip because he's got a good one. He's got, got a good one. Oh, hell yeah, he yeah. does. <laughs> hell yeah. I'm taking full credit for that one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he had his own little ability going, but I did help him and uh, I got to know them really well uh, yeah. through that process. And we've been close and friends ever since, but besides through my drinking mess. But uh, yeah, so that's a relationship that's still really Amazing. cool. Um, Point being, that's when I found I had this in inside of me that I was like I, I could bond with kids and and uh, and help them learn and and it seemed enjoyable. So I asked the guy at Black Box. I was like, Hey, is skate lessons a thing? And he was like, Yeah, man. I used to like I'd do a lesson for this one uh, mom, her kid for like twenty bucks an hour. I'm all twenty bucks an hour sounded like good money to me better than pest better control than, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and i was you don't like have to kill any rats and it is in some cases right i still it's, it's not bad i mean maybe not for california because it's so expensive here but anyway at that time making eight bucks an hour and i hear that and i'm all my wheel started turning yeah. and there's there's no business plan but i was like i have these photos from my skate career right and i shot with legitimate people all i got to do is reach out because i started making my amends and making things right so swift right right britain all these guys knew i was on the right track so i was able to call them oh, can i you send me this photo or sick whatever so i made us a flyer my friend that held me accountable for sobering up he's not even a graphic designer but i was like hey can you help me make a flyer because i didn't know shit about right, computers right. or anything and as a skate lessons with a pro that's that was a flyer. That was the flyer that started it all. So there was no name, no business plan, skate lessons with a pro, Neil Mims, and then 25 bucks an hour. Oh, so, you raised it from oh, 20 to 25. Yeah. I was like, man, I got to because this photo is sick. <laughs> <laughs> and you're pro. Uh, yeah. So it was like, uh, and, yeah, and once again, by the way, I, I was starting to skate a lot too. Mm -hmm. And the skateboard mag was going on. I got a little bit of coverage in there. Perfect. So I got some photos running again. And Love I thought that. I was like, yeah, it's like I was feeling good about myself, even though the, the whole skate career was done. You almost called Rodney Mullen again. Yeah. Right? I was like, hey. <laughs> but I did for a mo moment. It was like after like I got a spread. Mm -hmm. Like Swift gave me a spread during a hurricane in a pool. Like my ninety, I was ninety days sober. That's when the gifts of sobriety started happening. Oh, we 90 shot days. That, shot okay. that photo. And then it ran as a spread. Uh, and so I was like, oh, maybe there is a shot. Right. But nobody wanted the old washed up dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, happy to you skate though yeah yeah, yeah. At, least yeah no. at least you are skating no exactly, yeah. exactly. so that it's, it all just started coming together and so the skate lessons with a pro went to mcgill's mcgill's was nice enough to put that on their counter oh cool 
And I'm still working at Black Box because I didn't want to just put all my eggs in that basket. Right, right, right. Where were you doing these skate lessons at? Just the local park? Yeah, so it took a couple months and I'm like, I have my head down, like nobody's calling. Oh, this is cool. I, there I go, putting myself out there and nothing comes. Nothing's coming? Nobody's yeah. coming? Nobody's no, biting no, on the, no. the dope uh, photo exactly. on the, That's on the flyer? Like, Shit, I guess this isn't going to work. Okay. <laughs> so point being, uh, almost two months go by and I get a call from a mom. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go meet them. Wow, two months. Did the lesson, went good enough. Yeah. They told somebody, word of mouth. Word of it mouth. Just started. That, that's how things the, spread. The, the trickle effect started happening. And wow. then before I knew it, I wasn't like so busy, but uh, this is when I got the call from uh, from baby mama. Okay. Saying, hey, I can't handle, you know, Lauren anymore. It's, oh, wow. In so many words, that's what she said. It's because she was getting out of control. She was mm. she was 12 and starting her preteen stuff. Oh, okay. And mama knew I was on the right track. And she's like, hey, you want to take her? Oh, wow. And I wanted the challenge. Yeah, I was like, course. let's do this. And you've missed so many years. Exactly. You missed the eight years before, but then also the years that you tried. Exactly. You kind of, you missed oh, as well. well. Yeah, it was the first couple of years. So that, she was a huge part of that inspiration to sober up. She was a big part of that whole meltdown where I was like, I have to be this better right. example for her. And, and, and I love my dad, uh, but my dad wasn't the best example in those areas for me. You wanted to make that your... My thing, yeah. And, you know, my dad and I are cool today, mm. but he still, he likes to drink and okay. s- smoke weed. He's um, still doing his thing, but uh, we're cool. Yeah. He's just, he's just who he is. Sure. Um, and I love him. Yeah, yeah, of course. But like I said, I, I didn't want to be that example. And so that's what started hitting me about this. Okay. I know I jumped back a little no, bit. But, no, no. But I just want Lauren to know that I love her and she's a huge part of where I'm at today. It's a, yeah. I mean, she is. Why? She's why. Yeah. yeah. She's, it's amazing. Yeah. So it just took a little time. It took like a year and a half for me to do that back and Listen, forth. Listen, at least you're, yeah. you're here where you are now. Yeah. And I'm able now, you know. 13 a, years. Yeah. Sober. Have a beautiful um fiance at home with a freaking 19 month old and then a, a baby girl on the way so wow. wow i guess i only make girls hey it's all <laughs> hey. good congratulations yeah. thank you girl dad right yeah, yeah girl yeah. hashtag girl dad yeah yeah, yeah. so that's amazing yeah wow. so back the, you know once again the skate program uh started taking off and uh i was doing uh i, I had to raise my price too so daughter gets sent out here mm-hmm. and uh I'm like, the lessons were taking off, but not like a lot. So I was still at Black Box and I was like, I can't really work at Black Box making eight bucks an hour to support my daughter who's making her way out. You got another mouth to feed now. You got clothes and it's a whole thing. Yeah. So I went up to Chad and I told him what was going on. And I was like, hey, is there anywhere I can move in the company to make more money and learn and grow with you guys and with us? not knowing what was going on behind the scenes at the time okay, of Black yeah. Box. So, and he was like, respectfully, no. He goes, and I go, well, I'm not going to be able to work here too much longer. And I was like, I just want to be open and transparent about right, that. Right, right. So I learned. I learned yeah. things the right way. Right. Well, you know, just having that conversation it's a, before. It's, it's I'm a, like, it's a ah, communication. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. Before you burn that bridge, yeah. yeah. And guess what? This dude, instead of like saying, okay, cool, put in your two weeks, he's like, hey, because he knew the situation and he knew it was going to cost some money. He goes, I'm going to lay you off so you can collect unemployment. Amazing. Wow. Dude, huge, biggest, biggest help I could have. Because I was willing to risk it and just do it without that. But yeah. that was like. Wow. Having I mean, that little income coming oh, in yeah. was a yeah, lifesaver. Yeah. With getting the business going too. Because I've already had that brewing. So that income. You need that, to make more flyers. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, Neil Mum's Skate Academy wasn't created as a business until a couple of years after I was doing that for a while because wow. I didn't know anything about business. Sure. I was like, I didn't know shit. You, you're just going to, you're just going to the parking, probably getting cash from these yeah, cash. Pa- yeah. parents. There's no Venmo and yeah. there's no Instagram. How amazing yeah. is that? That you didn't even, yeah, you're just putting flyers and then word of mouth spreads. Yeah. And I went to not- all the skate shops. I went to Surf Ride, I went to Asylum and... Yeah, and they were all cool, and it just started started happening. And then uh, that, the you know s- s- I was able to do the um, what was it the unemployment for a year, mm-hmm. and we got our own apartment. And then by that time, the business was doing well enough, and I was just working seven days a week, taking care of her, um, doing lessons like 
three to five lessons a day, seven days a week. And that was bringing in enough money because my prices went up to 40 bucks an hour. 40 bucks an hour. Yeah. I'm going to start putting flyers out. Because I started getting booked, shop. right? And I was like, I, hey, if you want my time, it's going to be. Gosh, yeah. 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 But wait a minute. How how many kids per session are you doing at this point? Are you, are you just singles? Ranked? Oh, just singles. Back to back singles. So see, this is where I didn't know much about the business at the time. So you were, I could have you thought maybe like day. 60 bucks. So now you're making 60 bucks a day. No, 40 bucks an hour, four hours oh, 40 a day. bucks an yeah. hour for 240 four. bucks a day, seven days a it's week. It's not bad. Much. No. And you can skate all day. Yeah. I'm skating, hanging out with kids, just being a good example, being positive, stoking them out. Yeah. It was a, you're skating, what parks were you skating? I was using all the public parks, which at the time I didn't know you needed a permit. And oh, really? There was, there was something, I mean, you're supposed to, but. It was all cash or like. Yeah. It was just under the table cash. Like, whoa, whoa, I didn't have it set up that, as a business. Don't but, let the IRS hear you, bro. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're listening. That's, I think. That's, trust me, I'm. <laughs> I pay them plenty of money. You're legit, legit now. now. You're legit yeah. now. You started off every, yeah. I think a lot of businesses start off just like that. It's, you know, under, it's yeah, just like, you know, you, you're, you're not figuring it they out. They don't care about 200 something bucks. Of, you know what I mean? Like yeah. whatever. I mean, I paid it. Yeah. <laughs> I may be still paying off that, uh, that unemployment though. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot okay. because I didn't have them take Texas out because I needed all of it. Oh. And I'm like, I see that now and I'm all, oh shit, I should have known better. But you know, all the learning experience. But, oh, I know. Totally. <laughs> So, so that's when I uh, came up with the idea with a, a, a Zach Saracino's dad. Oh, Zach, Zach Saracino? Saracino? Kid yeah, rips. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Kid rips. He's really good. And, Did you uh, teach I him watched... all that stuff? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. No, but I was around him a lot because he, his dad and I came up with the idea to do, uh, well, I involved him in the idea, I should say. And he was a part of helping be uh kind of fund it in some ways because we got a van so the idea Sick. was i wanted to create uh you know i wanted to give kids an experience of what it was like to be on a skateboarding tour a g-rated version okay than what i was used to or, or, or used <laughs> sure, to, right? sure. Yeah. so i thought that was i was like let's let's do that and then we just take them around from park to park and then i call and utilize my connections like uh let's say it's Sheckler. he has his own little park right remy stratton at volcom all these relationships that i was able to make through skateboarding that i had burned up for a little while but made things <laughs> right and people knew i was doing something positive steve barra like these guys have the been barracks, so yeah. rad and yeah. taking them to the barracks it's a huge experience for those kids too. could take oh, them to the bird yeah. land and show them where you used to live yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i took them i took the kids out to bob's one time they got to watch bob no skate way. like i just i started, want to do that so i had guest pros come out and remember you called me. I did. And you I said no, I think. Yeah. What did I? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, I don't like kids. <laughs> Such a you said no. Every other pro you was super cool no. about it except for Chris. <laughs> no, no I, we were I, trying to make it happen. Trying to make it. Yeah, right. And I, I think you yeah. happened to be at Girl one time when I brought the kids. Oh. Um, and it was uh, there was an event going on there. So I did bring a crew and you okay. were there. I don't remember. I think it just, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember the but circumstances. I, we were having a discussion. Yeah. It's like, Chris, I want you to be the guest pro, you know, one of these weeks. But for me, I'm probably like, what am I going to do? Like, they want to see some other pros. They want to see. That's what you're going to do. It's off. Nobody told me that it turned off. I that only know. happened one time. The, hey, there, that's <laughs> what you're going to do is just sit and stand on your board. That's what you're going to do. do that, Man, you know, I would have been happy to see that in person. Look at that. Yeah, let's all just take a gander. It's beautiful. Just I that. appreciate that. Bro. Yeah, I appreciate that. Anyway. No, but it's amazing what you're doing now, and the, I want to. It's been playing for too long, dude. <laughs> he's, just over, he's like, "Hey, did you sabotage uh, you know, it? You know what it is? <laughs> it's time to put his fakey tray, fakey mammy up there now." Well, That's thanks for thing. coming, Neil. <laughs> Thank you, this has been a great episode, Neil. I think it's time for you to exit hey. stage ladder. You're trying to burn another bridge here. Bro. I don't know. Holy shit! I was doing good for a second. We're doing great. I, I just ruined the nine club for uh, me. Oh, okay. Never invited back. No, you're welcome. You're always welcome right. back. <laughs> no, I was saying he's thinking that, not that I want. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it. He yeah. didn't, he's he always did. thinking yeah. that. No, <laughs> yeah, he knows. Or, or this guy's curb shit is pretty spectacular. He's got some good tricks, bro. <laughs> Roger's got some good curbs. I enjoy myself. Yeah. Please enjoy yourself. Yeah. When did it really take off? When you got the van and you started bringing kids around to different spots and 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 meeting up with pros and stuff and. Yeah, that's when it it started blossoming, and once again, it wasn't uh, 
we called it something different when I involved, uh, got Zach's dad involved and, mm. and he actually put up for a van and, and it, we tried to make it work for a while, but I, I found like, um, as thankful as I am for Zach's, uh, dad, you mm-hmm. know, jumping in there and helping out. It, it didn't make sense that there, he didn't really skate. He wasn't a skateboarder. Right. Um, and he was Zach's, it was like Zach's dad kind of cruising and Zach would always, come along which is great and fine i mean and i still love those guys i'm just like it just didn't seem right because i feel like it's it's a skate tour we should have you know um someone that skates like helping me out that can help the kids Mm -hmm. more so i gotcha yeah dana was a great help as much as he could be and he was cool to the kids yeah yeah yeah. but like i said he's not he didn't you know not a skateboarder that's okay he knew how to roll on a board but he still you know so it started, you know, hitting me and I was like, yeah, you know, this just isn't working out. And, you know, we butted heads for a few and then we just went our separate ways mm-hmm. and, and uh, wish him the best and, mm-hmm. and wish me the best. And, uh, and like I said, I still see Zach around. He's killing. He's yeah, always he's killing. Great. He's yeah. incredible. He's yeah. a so, good skater. So that's when it was called Skate Fest when it was him. Oh. And Skate Fest, Fest, I mean, for fundamentally educational skateboarding tours. Okay. Well, wow. so, yeah, there was some thought process to that. Sure. Um, but uh, once again, it just didn't work out. And mm-hmm. so um, I started learning stuff about business. And then I was like, okay, I need to get protected. And then I started I started trying to come up with a logo yeah. and uh, with a with a graphic designer. And it was uh, some guy I knew, and he was trying to do the sober thing. So he was just oh, kind sick. of pitched in to help out to make the first logo for Neil Mims Skate Academy. And, uh, and then got that LLC. So I, I started doing the skate tours on my own. Oh, wow. Without any help. Okay. Um, and that's when uh, um, things started really taking off because once the overhead, you know, dropped dramatically yes. as well. But the same income was coming in, even though I did it on a smaller level. So before we would have a van full of 12 kids. This time I got the minivan, like mm. a smaller van, and just did six kids at a time. Okay. So was, you know, it's seat seven, and I'd have six kids, and and uh, and then it was easier to manage, easier to take around. So, sure. yeah, the overhead drop, but also, you know, the the income did, but I was, it still gave them this experience. And all the skate companies, like I said, that I was able to make relationships with through skateboarding knew what I was doing. Right. And they're so supportive. Like uh, Jim Thibault and oh, yeah. at Deluxe, uh, Rick Howard. Rick Howard, yeah. Oh, so amazing. Like everybody's just been so great uh, with pitching in for product, all the guys at Bones. And, oh, I love that. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it's just been really special because uh, I think for once people realize like, oh, it's Neil's not on the take. Yeah. You know, I want to give back to these kids and although it's, it's a paid thing. Yeah. I was sure I was making a living, but I was giving them this experience that they would never forget. So I would do these gift bags at the end of the week. It was a lot of work. Oh yeah. Uh, so I felt I like imagine. I was working for my money, not only being with the kids all day, filming them, answering texts from their parents, answering emails, yeah. skating with them too. Right. Yeah. I mean, full nine to five days driving, 150 miles, 200 miles a day. Crazy. <laughs> it was a lot. Wow. And I did that. I mean, that was just what I did. Yeah. That was for many years. And, but anyway, it was, uh, at the end of the week on Thursday night, I would get the, everything laid out for the gift, gift bags, mm-hmm. all the product. I would get frames from the dollar store and frame their certificate of achievement. I had these certificate oh, wow. of achievements made of what trick they learned that week. Okay. And then I'd, I'd fill it out and sign it for them and then frame that and then frame the guest photo pro or the guest pro photo, okay. the group photo that we would take yeah. and frame that and put it in there. Amazing. And wow. then, yeah. So the next day it was gift bag day and the kids knew it, but they didn't know what they were getting. So oh. I kind of just surprised them. Mystery box. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'd open up the bags and they see this. And so some of these kids I've been able to, the parents are like, yes, we're getting our money's worth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And as they should, I sure. think in anything, yeah. Yeah. it's like they're investing into it and not only investing into having someone positive and, uh, uh, you know, around their child and someone that they can trust. Cause that's mm-hmm. a huge thing, building trust. That's what that first couple of years was. Well, yeah. listen, I mean, you're, you're taking their kids and driving, like you said, 200 miles yeah. a day yeah. and you mm-hmm. know, where's this guy taking them? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Do a background s- check. Yeah. And sometimes I would want to, um, dude, if you were going to say, 
Because all the driving you did with the drinking, yeah, I'd be I like, know. dude, that's not where you go. No, no, so I'm, a, I'm sober now. <laughs> yeah, um, it's been 13 like, years. Where have you been? Hey. I know. I'm kidding, though. I'm so kidding. I, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so these parents are trusting me now, yeah. you know, with their children after all the stuff that I'd gone through. And I just started feeling really good about what I was doing in life for the first time in years. It's amazing. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and not only making a living to be able to support my daughter living with me, um, but also doing, being around something I love again yeah. and, uh, and, and sharing this experience that they would, you know, cause not every kid's going to go pro, but I wanted right. to give them that experience, a little taste of it. And we yeah. went to Oso Parkway by the way, cause it's pretty legal, you know, it's not legal to skate there, but I would go to, I would take them to actual street spots oh, wow. okay. that I knew weren't a bust and that didn't have a fence where oh, we were. Okay. So yeah, you got a jump drive. So uh, yeah, it was a part of that was that that's when I had Alex Wilms. I'd take him to these spots and oh. I've got footage of Alex Wilms when he was like 12, 13. Yeah. Did you ever yeah. get into any stuff with the cops with this stuff? Like going to spots with everyone? No. Uh, one time I did a camp in Arizona and uh, we did sneak into a skate park in Arizona oh. um, that it wasn't open yet because it was still wet in some oh. places but it was right by Cowtown and, and the guy was like oh, dude people just go in there all the time and I'm like okay not thinking oh, sure wow. enough dude two cops roll up and I'm just like oh no lesson learned Didn't yeah do that again well they get the true experience of a <laughs> they, I know. Yeah. that's what some of the parents were actually stoked on they're like hey you know, like, it could have been worse like right, right. it could have been you know because oh, you got to tell the parents too yeah. like hey we well, got to run in with the cops yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're so excited i got pulled over one time for crossing those double lines out of a uh uh the carpool lane okay five hundred dollar ticket oh, Ooh, but i had kids in the car going back to my skate park and uh and yeah, then and, and I go, hey guys, I go, and they were a little older crew, so it was cool. They're teens, but I was like, guys, let me tell your parents when we get back, because let me be the one. Yeah. Okay. Because right. I just want to be responsible and let them know I got yeah. pulled over. Because instantly, if a kid runs up, like, hey, we got pulled over by the cops, like for what? Yeah, totally. So, so I wanted to be the yeah. one to break it to them. What right. they do, they right. got out of the hey, we got pulled over by the cops. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the parents are waiting. I'm all. You did, yeah. yeah. I mean, but fortunately, like I said, I built. I was. I'm so lucky. I built a good reputation enough. Parents have trusted me, um, uh, with their child, yeah. and, and if if any little stuff like that pops up, and it's an honest like mistake, of course. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you know they're not. It's not like they weren't. Re- like oh we're never gonna do this camp again yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. right so there those were the only really two incidences where I had to deal with Ooh. stuff like that so yeah. fortunately or we did get in a uh, fender bender one time somebody smashed into us at Chino Park oh it wasn't my fault right I was right, pulling right. out of the parking lot some lady just reversed into us fortunately it was going slow okay I get the rental uh, I get the rental car place to come pick us up because my van was actually wouldn't like move. Oh, wow. It was bent. It was it's a good fender bender. It was a good fender bender. And uh, I got it towed from Chino. The rental car place come picked us up, gave us another rental van. We hopped in the van, continued our skate day. My van got towed back and still okay. gave them a great experience. Even wow. A little. So. Amazing. What you did, what, you, what you're <sighs> doing is, is incredible, man. I mean, like literally taking them into, you know, I listen, a normal skate camp or skate teacher just goes to the park, teach them how to drop in, do the thing. Like you're going above and beyond. You're taking them on like a tour. And calling people like they want to come be the guest pro. Uh, and calling and, me and, and call not it, showing up. Exactly. Yeah, not, uh, not. <laughs> Rick Howard. I mean, like I said, I know I mentioned a couple of these names before, but all, everybody's been so generous to come out and help support the program, support the kids and be incredible. a part of it. And that is incredible because at one point, nobody wanted to pick up my calls understandably yeah. yeah i didn't want to pick up my calls <laughs> i didn't even have a phone to call me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it's 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 a real cool change and i love my life today yeah. and i love being able to do that and not only that is the skate camp still going the skate academy is still going but you're doing you're doing olympic stuff now yep so i'm uh olympic skate coach you call it uh, okay mentor mentor yeah more of a mentor so uh <laughs> It's, it's all the same, realistically. I mean, think about, uh, you know, what what the older guys were doing back in the day by going, hey, you know, put your foot here, do this, do that. It's 
That's a form of coaching. Sure. You know? Sure. Um, that's what Stacy Peralta was to the Bones Brigade. Okay, yeah. You know? Yeah. He's a coach, mentor, and kind of gave him Mike Ternowski for mm. the Plan B guys. Right. So I know there's all different, um, you know, ideas about coaching and skateboarding, but that's that's what I do. Yeah. Well, wait, um, you, but the reason why you're good at that too is that you were also a judge at one point, right? Yeah, exactly. And we, I think we were only judged like one, two contests together. We did, which one did we, we did a uh, do tour. Yeah, we did the do tour. Yeah. That's two right. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fortunately I was able to, so through this whole process and the skate Academy running and, and then um, temporarily having my skate, own skate park. Yeah. Um, uh, I was able to get these judging jobs. And so I've, you know, judge do tours and, uh, the X games. And, and so I learned a lot. I mean, you know, just because you know how to skate and you know, skateboarding doesn't mean you're going to be a good judge either. Sure. And uh, it's not a fun job sometimes as you, you can vouch for sometimes. It. I mean, it's, 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 it's hard. It's a job. It's, yeah. 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 It's a job. You gotta, you have to judge skateboarding. Yeah. And it, it but it, there's some really cool parts, you know, the, the traveling and doing it, but mm-hmm. I, I learned a lot from that. So that's back to my point. I, I'm able, I was able to package that. So I knew it. Uh, I either might take a chance and get lucky and be picked to judge the Olympics. Maybe. Yeah. I, like I've done so much with skateboarding and the community now that I was like, I had to figure out, okay, what do I want to do? Like mm-hmm. I, I was starting to get burnt on the skate programming. Not okay. that I was bummed working with kids. I was just like, I felt like I needed to grow and do something more. Gotcha. Yeah. And so this, this opportunity with the Olympics uh, popped up and then I was like, well, maybe I just, I'm not going to be a judge anymore, but I can package the judging knowledge because I know, for the most part, what I mean, we all you have know our the own criteria ideas. of yeah. like what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and then my teaching knowledge and mm-hmm. uh, with working with the community with kids, yeah, it's a little different when you're working with older, you know, sure. uh, adults now. But it's still, it's like it's more of a mentor thing, and that's part of my whole thing too. Like with doing AA and and helping people get sober is like you're you're mentoring. It's like I'm not teaching Jagger eating. Nicole Howe's, you know, new tricks. I mean, they, they've got their own ability, right? Of course, right. But I am there to help guide them and, and keep, you know, tr- help them through competitions, help them hopefully pick the right run that will help them get on the podium, if right. not win, right? Right. So, and then or, whenever there's good times, you know, be there to help support and, and navigate those good times with the right head on the shoulders or when there's bad times and help right, navigate. Right. No, it's interesting because it's almost like you're taking that weight off of their shoulders for the contests of knowing like the, the scoring stuff and how to, you know, sometimes you just, the skater just wants to skate. They're yeah. not thinking about, Oh, if I do a back disaster on there or whatever it may yeah, be, yeah. I'm not going to score the points that I need or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah, there's a system. There's a system. Yeah. 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 And some skaters and don't want to follow it. Follow it. And, and that's fine too. But it's like some skaters want to go and win. And especially with now with the Olympics, with the pressure of like only three spots are getting picked, sure. you know, by based on points, that it's a whole different pressure now. You know, right. it's like you have to do this and do this to get the points to get there to do that. Right. You yeah. got to go to this contest and this contest yeah. and do this yeah. and do that. And you got to make sure... Yeah, it's good. It's it's almost like a, oh, I want to say it's it's like a you know like a lot of skaters have like managers now you know managers mm-hmm. and agents and stuff like man, more more manager style but you know uh, I don't want to deal with this contract and then you negotiate you do all that stuff yeah. I'm gonna skate absolutely yeah and and so it is a part but like I said I've been fortunate which Kelly brought up is I've been fortunate to be at the judges table which mm-hmm. not a lot of those guys get so they're like I mean I've even talked to some of these managers and they're like dude why is this why is that and I have to explain it just like whenever you get approached as a judge on why a score came out a certain way I have to right explain it and and sometimes it's harsh it's just harsh reality sure. well this is why you know yeah. you 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 carve too much, you know. Right. You didn't utilize every wall as an opportunity for a trick, you know. You, yeah. you did too much carving. Your trick, your trick selection was great, but there was a lot of time wasted floating around sure. without hitting anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just. You gotta tell them. No, yeah, yeah. You gotta, yeah, yeah. You gotta you tell know? them how it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Train wreck took your spot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I sure did. Wow. Oh man. You know, the gotta, for better than you. Gotta love Deer Dick. <laughs> yeah. Just being just brutally honest. Yeah, and I appreciate him now for you know all of them yeah it's like they even 
they picked up my call. We can be thankful for that. And that's amazing. Anyway, yeah, that's a no. Problem. You're good. Bro, so wait, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, well, were you, uh, so do you work for Team USA? No. How does this work? No, I don't. Uh, so I start. It's it's like private coaching, but oh, okay. we all work together since I'm working with some of the USA team now. Mm. Um, and Minna uh, Stess is on uh, female park team. Okay. And, and Jagger is on male street team. And Nicole was in female park, but she didn't get enough points last season. But she's still going to go for it. And she's working hard. Mm. And she's she's doing really well, actually. Oh, amazing. Um, um, so, no, I, I was like, I was talking to Josh about doing it for them. And there was a team management position open. And Mark Waters already had his foot in the door over there. But Josh did call me and give me an opportunity to talk to him. Mm. And uh, the pay grade, believe it or not, because they only have so much funding, was a little low. And I was like, you know, even if I did get the job, which I didn't, I was like, I don't know if I could, like, survive off of that. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. And I know they're just getting started. Well, you know? yeah, it's a first so, year. Yeah. It's a yeah so of, I was yeah. like, well, I should just, you know, I started, I was like, well, I'll just do it privately but yeah. i'm helping usa anyway sure. and so we all talk and work together like you know mimi and i talk because she's the team manager for the females and mark and i stay in contact so we're we're all working together okay. to get the usa team it's just so. it, we're, we're everybody's just trying to figure this thing out yeah it's that's it, what it is it's interesting yeah it's it's definitely you know there's some there's some weird avenues there <laughs> i'm <laughs> sure and not in a bad way it's just it's different it's different, different. yeah it's different, it's different for skateboarding different. you know yeah, exactly it's yeah. way it's different not, it's, not, been down. it's yeah. nothing that we're used to yeah. no i'm not either yeah this is all new for all of us it's really. new for everybody yeah man. and i'm just trying to stay open-minded and uh, about it all it's like you know it's 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 crazy yeah it's, skateboarding's getting introduced to kids in these provinces all over the world that would have never got a taste of it. And I think that's a beautiful thing that the Olympics may have brought to the table that's or true. is going to bring even yeah, more. Yeah, it's grow skateboarding. Good for the companies too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So even good for the core companies that might not be into it, but it's going to help their board sales. Maybe skate shops will be successful. May, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> only time will tell. Yeah, we'll see. What happens. After August 6th of this year, we'll kind of know... Yeah. Everything is. But yeah. I'll tell you this, for every skater that's that rides a skateboard, it's, it's nothing's going to change for them. Yeah. Just gonna, they're just going to skate. Yeah. And that's the beauty. It's going to be crazy to skateboarder. To who wherever you are cuz you're going to remember watching it that that first moment, yeah. you know, the, the Olympics, skateboarding yeah. Olympics, that's going to be I'm gonna What's going to be cool just seeing the general public change their perception of skateboarding. Yeah. Which yeah. they already I, have over time, but so, yeah, yeah. this yeah. one is yeah. going to be yeah. Yeah, it's really going to hit, yeah. I think. Yeah. You're going to have like grandmas going like, "You know Nigel?" Yeah. Nigel and Tony. Yeah. I did the Tony Hawk thing. He's, you always get that. Uh, oh, you skateboard? You know Tony Hawk? It, of course. Big, it's, it's yeah, yeah, right. It's the first thing that they ask. I just start saying no. Yeah. Who? Tony who? To, I know Chris Roberts. There you go. <laughs> That's a good one. You yeah. See, you seen the switch flip? Maybe? We start hearing switch. that. Yeah. yeah I know. Well, look, wow. you look back. I, I know. I just want to make sure it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is incredible, bro. Yeah. I mean, I want to congratulate you for, you know, I mean, fighting through alcoholism and coming out and doing it the the sobriety 13 years it's incredible bro yeah. and what you did with the skate academy and now the olympics i mean bro it's like sky's the limit yeah. you know who knows yeah. what's the next page i have no idea see there's that's the only thing there's no really no backup plan i'm just yeah but you're but you love it though but so you're in such a good space exactly. though you're yes. in such a good space that whatever comes to the table you're gonna you're gonna go full full force absolutely yeah, yeah. I'm more focused now, that's for sure. I love that, bro. Yeah. Your eyes are white. Bro. Are they? I'm kind of tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm all spracked out on coffee. Oh. Um, no, but seriously, dude, congratulations yeah. on everything, man. This Thank is you. uh it's it's been great having you here, bro. I guess you're winding it down, it sounds like. Well, I'm is just there getting any, started. There, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike Valley, watch just, out. Yeah. Just watch kidding. out, Mike Valley. Hey, I'm seriously honored and so happy you guys invited me on the show. Hey, we're just stoked. Yeah, yeah, of course. We're, we're stoked Thank you came, bro. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, maybe you can come be the guest pro one day. No, yeah. no kid. <laughs> listen, He's quiet, no dude. kid. Yeah, just, no kid yeah. wants to come see me, dude. They don't know who I am. I'll, I'll ask Jagger if he wants to want you to come skate with him. Jagger. What am I going to do with Jagger? He's going to be flying around the park doing 540. I don't know what I'm doing. I would love for you. Yeah, yeah I would love to see that, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna line it up. I'm. I got your number still. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Have him go to a street league or something. Just be like a coach. Do you need an assistant yes. coach? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. a great idea. Assistant coach. Sideline. I thought like a segment right there. 
assistant coach. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm going to fuck their runs yeah, up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's going to be yeah, so bad. Get you a whistle? It's going to yeah. be so bad. I'm like, yeah. it's a segment for our show, but horrible for their career. Oh, I know. So yeah, yeah. it's like, I don't know about this. Oh, I'm going to okay. wear a yeah, coach's yeah. jacket, yeah. whistle, oh, hat, yeah. all the whole thing. Man, maybe even a visor. Yeah. Not a good idea. No. Yeah. no. It's, it's, <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah lose the visor. it would be fun. <laughs> yeah, there's no none of that happening. You know, yeah. I know it's funny for people to joke about, you know, the, the Olympic stuff. I mean, at least I, I'm not like showing up for them. I, know. Well, I mean, well, I'm I might show up with pink runners, but <laughs> it's got some pink. No, runners Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> That's cool, though. You're like so involved with these with these skaters lives, you know? Yeah. And like helping them out. Thank you. And it, it is fun. It's interesting. It's new. It's different. Um, and I'm around something I've been passionate about since I was a kid. It's amazing. It is. And I'm making, you know, I'm not getting rich, but I make a living off of doing something I love to do. That's and great. I'm so thankful for that. Like, I know if it ended tomorrow. Dude, skateboarding's been so f- so good to me. Bro. I couldn't ask for any better life out of it. I love it, man. You're still in it and doing it. I mean, listen, bro. You, you I mean, uh, feedback. You know, the. Vi- I mean, you had some good video. I mean. You were one, killing it, one dude. One okay video part. One okay. It was uh, more than okay. More than okay. You got covers, dude. You got covers. covers. You got the cover. Yeah, the, the slam heard round the world, you know, with the eye. Lip slide to fakie, there the 18. Go. That was a... Hey, but you're and still... you got Big Brother? Rick Cossack was... Uh, he was bummed on me. I was supposed to be shooting an interview for Big Brother. I'll just... Uh, yeah, sorry. Real quick. No, go ahead. Cossack was... Uh, every time he walked into my place when I lived in Long Beach for a short time, and I was just nine in the morning he'd show up and I'm already drinking and smoking weed and he'd just walk in and go oh no what are you doing he's like I can't believe you fucking do this it's like let's go and then we'd go out and try and shoot a photo and I'd get something done you get something done I'd get a photo but and then I'd get hurt on the next time and then he was just getting so bummed and he'd just start he's like I'm over the interview we're just gonna uh, start running your shit as editorial I'm over it this was long after the cover came okay. out. That was like when things were going well. Sure. Wow. Anyway, yeah. So it, he was one of the people that were just, just so bummed on me. Like, <laughs> Did you ever trying, call him to apologize? Yeah, he knows. He knows I'm, I'm doing well yeah. now. And I probably have said, dude, I'm so, Yeah, I have. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's it's, great. It's he's, been a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, he's awesome. He's a great dude. He's given yeah. me a lot of, he gave me a lot of coverage in Big Brother. Like even before the the cover, like doing a Florida trip and all that, it was he's been really cool and good to me. He's great, but I don't blame him for getting pissed. I was just a pile. Yeah. Hey, you're a different dude now. Yeah. Thank you. Not Amazing. Bro. Stoked, man. Bro. Life is good. Life is great. It is. Yeah. Thanks again. Of course, dude. Wait, wait. This isn't over. Oh, okay. Can we good. give you some nine club stuff to take home with you, bro? I would love that. Please. Okay, we're running a little low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Running you say a little that every low. Episode. I know. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're we're putting in a new, some new orders here, so we're gonna get some new stuff in pretty soon. But we would love to um, give you some stuff to take home. We got mugs. We got uh, I don't know what we have. Dude, I love coffee. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm probably addicted to it. I love that. I mean, yeah. at least mugs. it's better. It's better than the other stuff. So. What yeah. size do you wear? What, what do you uh, large? Large, yeah. large? Kelly, do if you we, mind? I'll look. If we have some large, right? Uh, large t-shirts. T-shirts within another room. So I have to go in. Which one do I go? Okay. In? I'll, I'll just go poke them. Listen, you're you went from panhandling on the side of the road. Yeah. To running a skate academy and being involved in the Olympics. Yeah. That's that's. That's, that's <laughs> you look at it that way. That's I crazy. See, I, bro. I don't paint that picture, but now that you did for me, I'm I'm looking at it, and that's pretty beautiful. Isn't that a beautiful yeah, thing? Thank you, bro. Yeah, I'm thankful. Dude. It did. You know what? I want to just say it, it doesn't come without a lot of hard work internally on yourself, but sure. also just having good work ethic in, in everything you do and staying motivated yes. is all that's a part of it. And here's the biggest part: is you, having outside help yeah having help i wouldn't be where i'm at today without people jumping in and helping me right and i I do want to say thank you to john golden this was my partner which is now a friend him and his wife and his son jake that i used to work with those are the people that help uh open up the skate park academy skate park that was a short-lived okay uh, two years that we had that park and did something really cool and positive so yeah, I, I want to make sure. I know we didn't really get into that and cover it, so I, I want to make sure that I thank them because they're a huge part of our lives now. But he was a huge part of helping me go through that experience and 
and helping support it, him and his wife and, yeah. and his son. And yeah, we're like family now. So that's great. But yeah, the skate park was just, you know, that business is interesting. It? What, uh, were you, were you run? It was it open to the public or yeah, was it was it a, a public, public skate park. We oh. did programming. The skate park was small and fun. And, uh, it was, um, we wanted to open up more space, uh, to put in a bowl. And oh. so we got a bowl donated to us, but the landlord wanted us to take over the whole space and we weren't in that position. Oh. We were doing well enough to take over a little space and we knew that would probably bring in more clientele. Gotcha. But it was still challenging. It's a roller coaster yeah. of a business. Yeah. But, Skateboarding uh, is a roller coaster. It's a, it's yeah. a wave. It yeah. goes up, it goes down. It goes, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's it, a tough business. It is. Yeah. And you know, we had some good people work for us, uh, Mike and Heather and, um, they helped manage it. And it was just like, like I said, we wanted to open up more space. We weren't in a position to take mm. over the old space. It was 25 grand a month for the whole building. It was syndrome. That's, that's a lot. That was syndrome building. Wow. The full circle of the people that used to send me boards in Florida when I was 11. Yeah. That's where my skate park ended up. That's so funny. Wow. Uh, how many years? 30 years later. Thank you, Kelly. Anyway, so. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah, no, I'm thankful. It was a great learning experience. We just were in that position. We were trying to find another building and it just, we had the ramp being stored, which is now at Vans, the vert ramp, the small vert ramp. So that's the Vans Grosso's ramp. ramp? Yeah. Oh, no way. The Grosso Skate Academy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I call it. It's in Grosso yeah. Skate Academy. Yeah. It's amazing. He loves that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Just kidding, Jeff. We love you. Hey, first of all. But no, it's cool. I'm glad it went to a good home. Yeah, oh, a lot for of sure. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it's... thank you so much, yeah. bro, for coming on, man. I love your story and your enthusiasm right now, man. You're just, you're, you're killing life. Thank you. I love it, bro. I appreciate you're that. You're going to kill it even harder with the Switch Flip Manny mug to drink your coffee out of in the morning. Oh, this is the way shit. to get the day started. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. So... I could put this in motion if I just do shots. You could do oh, that. Oh, yeah. 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 Do a little time. Yeah, yeah, do a little time lapse. Oh, well. You should get this silhouette made. Because and, uh, that's a real styly lip slide, right? Just, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. I hope I make it. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. Well, how many tries is a lip slide that down? Was a lip slide to fakie, and it was, uh, I didn't know if I was coming out forward or fakie. That's how much I Really? Did. Just yeah. taking it. Yeah, wow. I, I had a 22 at the top of the stairs. <laughs> oh, dude. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Gosh, never stopped. No. Damn. And smoked probably ton uh, ten mall hits before I left the house. Dude, that's so San Diego. And uh, <laughs> but anyway, that was fourth try. I figured out after the third try, I was like, "Oh, my body's rotating." You got to gum out fakie. Yeah, and then the fourth try. Oh my god. F yeah, first try, I hurt my ankle really bad, and I saw the dudes packing up because I was like, "I'm done." That scared the shit out of me. I'm over it. And when they started packing up, I was like, "I just got past the worst try." Okay, I'm good. And went back Damn. up, and then second try, I made it all the way down, because the first try, I hit my, did the back wheels clip. Oh, oh no! Shit. And then stuck in the lip and had to leap all the way down that thing. It was pretty <laughs> scary. Anyway, cheers, bro. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else we got? Crazy, yeah. bro. This is a uh, the the burning mug. No it was way. made by uh, Sam Pearson. Oh, what? Here's a uh, a pack of stickers for you. Maybe you put this on your uh, coach's jacket. There in the My, uh, what, no, I'll wrap one around the whistle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one around the whistle. Yeah. Exactly. How big is that whistle? Uh, here's a uh, Nine Club New Era hat oh, for you. Sweet. Got that hat. He's going to take... Oh, he's gonna... oh, I was going to rock it right uh, now. Do I whatever do that you want, bro. We got a beanie be here, too. Are you a beanie dude or a hat Ooh, guy? I'm sweating already, though. Okay. Look at that. There you go. Boom. Look at that. You look great, bro. You look official. Oh, man. All right, cool. We got four more hours. You ready? You're going to look. <laughs> <laughs> new <laughs> hat in four more hours. Yeah, let's go. Here's a uh, <laughs> new era nine club beanie for you. You know, dude. might get cold out there in Japan. I, I do wear know. beanies, though, yeah. actually. I just oh, didn't did. want to put it on right now because it's, you, it's hot. Japan, the summer dude, is pretty hot. Are, is it pretty hot? Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Invite me on. At night. We never know. I get coffee mugs, which I love. And I mean, this fakey tray flip, fakey manual silhouette <laughs> is pretty. Do Wait. We, do we cue the music right now? <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's a nightclub shirt for you, bro. <laughs>